Hello everyone and welcome back to Asian Cash. and it's very nice to have you back as this is the first proper video I've done for god knows how long so we're going to see how this works and this is also on a new device so I'm sure that won't crash but joining me in this adventure is going to be four very very kind people so we'll go through their names we've got Ben, we've got Luke, we've got um, Matt and we have got do you want me to call you the ever chosen or should we go by your real name? Nah, just go by the next one. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, so the idea of this video is essentially we are going to be talking about how to get into third edition. And this isn't mainly along the lines of going like, oh, what do you need to buy and stuff? This is mainly in case you've been out of the game for a while, like myself, who I've played probably a couple games of third edition. And then we're going to go into the new General's Handbook of 2022. And if you haven't played for a little while, um, presumably maybe since third edition came out, it may be a little bit off-putting to get into Age of Sigma at the moment, where there's been so many rule changes and so many updates to the game that you might be thinking, where does your army stand? How do I actually get back into this um, without it all just being a bit too much? So does that sound good to everyone? Yeah, yeah. good. Fantastic. And what I will say, anyone who's watching this live, feel free to um, ask any questions away. Uh, if you are watching this on demand, just put your questions in the comments in case we have not answered them. And uh, above all that, I really hope you enjoy this show. So the first question I'll ask everyone is, how's everyone doing? Yeah, I'm all right. Hot. Got hot rolling. Yes. Got rolling out, though, fun times. It's uh, and it is Ben's gone, uh, gone COVID positive, and uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yes, yeah, so I saw that. Very, very sorry to hear that. Yeah. I'm COVID free and the weather's pretty good. Oh, what, what, weather's glorious up here. Gorgeous. I mean, and thankfully it's not got too hot here yet. No. That, that's Monday and Tuesday. I think. Yeah, that's Monday yeah. and Tuesday. I think it's yeah. supposed to be 38 here on Monday. So, yeah. Tuesday. Tuesday. It's 40 in London on Monday. So, we're in a gash. <laughs> and he's working. Yes, that'll be. I mean, I'll be working the night shift in a tunnel. So, I'm sure it'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, all the heat, all the heat would be trapped down there. It'd be like a scaven rat and a bloody burrow and I'll burn alive, yeah, essentially. Yeah. Um, right. So let's go on to the first proper question, and that is going to be: What is the best way to get into this game? So I know this question and the answer to the question usually stays the same throughout probably Age of Sigma's history, ever since there's been points in Jemma's Handbook, but. I know there are ways like basically just simple as like are these new vanguard boxes that are now uh, like the replacement of star collecting boxes are they still a good way to get into the game that's like a good starting point for most armies most of it seems pretty good i think i think with the vanguard ones some of them are a little bit poor but like the nurgle one for, for example is really good i think that's a like the nurgle one is probably one of the better value for monies to get into the game mm -hmm. because you get a little bit you get a little bit of everything and it just mm -hmm. seems like a really balanced box. Whereas, like, say, the Fire Slay one is a significant downgrade on the old stack collecting one. Yeah, more, more of OK and no Magma Draft, so. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard times. I don't, I don't know why I did see the Fire Slay box, and without knowing the army too much, I know I have got some to paint. I was like, it's all the same model. Yeah. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. the, the Magma Draft really did add that nice sort of back piece mm. to it, and they are more expensive as well the vanguard boxes i believe yeah, yeah they are Germany. yeah yeah but you do get you do technically get more is it, is it 600 um, points you get in it is it about, yeah. yeah i think it's, i think it's around 600 points but i think i think the idea is you should be able to purchase that <clears throat> and a single small hero it comes with it. it comes with a small hero now because i know some of the stack collecting didn't yeah so yeah. he's just solid 600 points yeah, mm. I th uh, I'm more mean. I think the idea is you can buy that an additional and an additional small hero to have mm. a full 750 point ish yeah. size army to play your first games. And um, all and all the boxes with that little extra hero all come to about 750. Then so it's I don't want to say balanced, but mm -hmm. some the, of the, the idea is bizarre. a degree of balance. Yeah, yeah. That's There's no real balance at 750 points. If people want to take the mick with it, then they will do. <laughs> But mm. if everything's out, if everything's out of the same box and you've got a group of friends all getting one of the Vanguard boxes and then that's how they get into it, I think that's probably not a bad that's not a bad shout if you get a group of mm. you together. No, definitely. I think that's pretty good. Is there anything else that you think, you know, is a good way to get started? I mean, obviously, you know, check things like eBay, Facebook market groups and all those sorts of things for cheaper sort of models yeah, to buy great. as well. But um the, what, uh, yes, sorry. 
the dual boxes are quite nice because they come in with they come with the little tapes and stuff, and then you've got a second army, so you can get a friend. So, so you got someone to start with as well. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. We just had was it Echoes of War? Was it the Scaven? Yeah, the, Echoes of so, Doom. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Echoes of Doom. There. We've also got the Dominion box set above that, and um, there's going to be a Lumineth and a each one coming out um, around the corner, isn't it? Interesting. Because I quite like, I quite like the Kirsten from the new the new battle box. Mm. Yeah, it looks really nice. Yeah. yeah, but so, so, great. Yeah, so so far the last few battle boxes have been a bit uh, lopsided with models. Yeah, so mm. like Shadow and Pain was terrible. With like the Daughters of Cain half was way better than the uh, Slash part, and then mm. uh, with the Echoes of Doom, the uh, Sylvaneth were just so much better than the Skaven. Mm. Which is it's, it's a real shame because I think the was it Feast of Bones. Because I thought that was quite a good one. Domin Dominion's not yeah, bad, to be fair, as well. No, Dominion's not bad. And it is still knocking around out there. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah. Very easy to get. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think there's, there's still some stock on some of the usual uh, online retailers in the UK anyway. And yeah. I, I know there's a couple of the local game shops around by us that have them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and to be honest, you can probably now get them for a bit cheaper than they were when they first came out. <laughs> yeah, but the, yeah, I've GW seen them did, knocking around for about eighty to. Yeah, but G, GW did put them on. Was it sixty-five pounds at some point? Was it? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah they, they did their they watch sale. Yeah, because they do sales oh. now, don't they? Every so often, yeah. whatever it was called. Sort of. Yeah. Yeah. Pre-ordered yeah. mine. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I pre-ordered too. <laughs> Me too. Uh, I pre-ordered two, and I built and painted one model from body boxes. Nice. But I'm convinced that I don't regret <laughs> spending the extra money um, because the day when I arrived in post, it was a really glorious day. Obviously, um, right? So we, I saw, think... we saw the picture. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I did <do> <laughs> Look, you're just going to play the YouTube game. You're going to play the YouTube game. Or the yeah. game. Oh, it's, yeah. it's very, it's so very straightforward. We've, we've got a comment in the chat going that clearly the answer is the uh, fleshy to port stock collecting box. Which yes, not I mean, that is still yeah, not wrong. That is, I mean, um, I went to, I was just gonna say, like, I went to my games workshop the other day, like, place to where I live, and that obviously you have all the shells with all the um, armies and everything, you know, like there's death, there's grand alliance, uh, destruction, chaos, order, etc. And then there's, you know, within death, there's a sort of like grave lords, there's a bunch of boxes for them. There's the same for Nighthaunt, there's the same for Australian Bone Reapers, and then Fleshy of Courts there is just the stock collector box next to the battle tone. Because that's all you game. need. Yeah. It's, it's the same for the uh, Beast of Chaos. If you go into Games Workshop, yeah. it's that collector box. You don't box. even have to start I collecting. <laughs> yeah. Whereas, was... like, when I go to a couple, a couple of my local stores, they have uh, a lot of the like direct to, uh, order early stuff. So they've got like Dragon Ogres and Bulgars and stuff. So it, it's cool. a bit weird when the, the smaller shops have got. Like a better, collect a better selection of an army. I was, I was mm. looking at like the cheapest army to get into, and I think it was just two start collecting flesh eaters and the Broken Realms box because that's still hanging out a little bit. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah the Broken Realms boxes were yeah. very. Were, yeah, that, that's probably another good way to start as well because mm. Broken Realms boxes are really nice. Mm. So the Zinch, the Zinch one's a pretty good way to start into disciples because it gets because it gets you your blue horrors and your oh, what are the little ones called. Pink horrors, uh, Brimstones. Brimstones. Brimstones, That's the one. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah, you get you actually get those rather than just an absolute shitload of pink horrors. There you go. Um, Adam. You always need more. Pings. Although that being said, do not touch the cities of Sigma one wheel march <laughs> no. Unless so, you want to play narratively. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. Uh, Luminarx quite. Luminarx and Celestial Hurricane is quite nice. It's great, but I would not say that is exactly the box you should be picking up as a starting. Oh no. Yeah. Slaves of Darkness one that was just two chariots. Yeah, it, it, yeah. Was, it was three chariots, but yeah, it wasn't oh, great. You bought that one, didn't you? Again? The Beast of Chaos one was really good, though. The Beast of Chaos was uh, the Gorgon, six balls, and a Shaman, which it's that that plus stack collecting box is a really good thousand point army, near enough thousand points army. Mm. So, like, it's really, really solid. Yeah, I, I like those boxes. I didn't buy the Chaos one because I already had I think I've already got about three chaos chariots. Yeah. But um yeah. I it makes still in plastic wrap. <laughs> yeah. well, the, they... OB, the OBR one was nice. 
Yeah, it was. I, I'll tell you what, though. I mean, this is a bit of a side note, but if you've watched any of my videos, you know I do those quite a bit. But what I would say is that, like, it's crazy how... I don't know it's because I've been out of the game for a while, but I remember when the OBR one come out, um, came out and there was the 10 Death Riders and the Liege Cavalos in that box, I believe. Ooh, yeah. yeah. And I remember being so angry that the battalion for that box set was really, really bad because um, I really wanted a nice battalion for Bosch Brain Reapers. And now in the meta, it doesn't matter because those battalions don't work anyway. Like, everything's completely shifted. So if you ever get annoyed... About a certain rule, give it a year or two, and it'll be completely gone. Yeah. Um, so Generally, there we go. And I think that's a lovely I... note to end the show on. So we'll leave it <laughs> oh, Um Sorry, I was interrupting someone. I, uh, I have learned every, anything of playing this game for like 10 years is just buy the worst shit and, they, and you will be overpowered at some point. <laughs> yeah, buy the worst shit that you have yeah. yeah. well, <laughs> we'll to live And it's my time to shine. Yeah, yep. Beastie Chaos, yeah. I'm very, very happy coming back into the game and seeing that they're doing very well because they, uh, they honestly deserve it. Just buy whatever Glenn's buying. <laughs> yeah. Fine. Keep up with Glenn and you'll be fine. Um, right, and then the sort of the second part of this question, if anyone's just joined this, we're going to go through a list of questions, sort of like what's the best way to sort of get back into the game and been out of it for a while, or if you're brand new. And the first question was, Best way to get start, uh, best way to get into the game. And I suppose the second part with that is like not going too much into list building itself in terms of you know um, the restrictions and everything. But now the game is turning quite. If you looked at building a vanilla sort of army list, it's turning quite infantry heavy, isn't it? In the new edition, in the old edition, there was lots of monsters running around, like to the point where. If you're I'm in an R in, should you put a big expensive like hero monster into your army? A lot of the time you put it in because it would fit the well, I say the last edition, so I mean the first part of third edition. 3.1. Was like, yeah, 3.1. Um, 3.0 was like that. And then obviously with Glacian Veterans, is it called? Yeah. 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 Um yeah. everything's turning very heavy infantry, and obviously there's there are curses and bonuses to that, which we'll get to later. But it's just sort of saying, like, if you maybe played a, a game or two at the start of third edition and you've got your, I'm not saying this doesn't work anymore, but let's say you went for a very monster heavy army and you're going to come back into this edition with a very monster heavy army, um, things have changed that have given bonuses to infantry. So I don't know if anyone else has any more thoughts on that, but what people, traditional army lists from 3.0 have changed a little bit in 3.2 are we now? I thought it was 3.1. Well, 3.1. 3.0 was Dominion. 3.1 was the first battle pack. The first pitch battle, and then we're 3.2 now. Okay. Yeah. We're in 2022 to 2023. That's the point. But yeah, so some things have changed in that regard. Yeah. No, it's... I, I quite I quite like the fact that now the armies that I've seen and the lists I've seen, everything's actually looking more like an army rather than just mm. a, hero, a couple of heroes and a few monsters. So mm. it's kind of it, it's like it, it's the game I want. Mm. I know because it, it, it feels it feels more like what I was used to when I played play, play a lot of fantasy and stuff like that. But I do like seeing like masses of infantry going against each other. It's just it, it gives it gives you that kind of like th that battle fantasy that you want. It, it does. I mean, I know me and Luke had a game on um, TTS the other week, and I think the first thing we both kind of said is just remind you a bit of Warhammer Fantasy with just like these right. big blocks of infantry crash, uh, crash into each other. But you're going to say something, weren't you, Matt? Um, I know that with the new third edition books as well, um, armies are a lot more varied. So mm. you've got a lot more choice within this. Sometimes there was like the one route that you had to take, whereas now with the yeah. third edition books, I think there's more options. Yeah, yeah, I, I completely agree with that. I think yeah. that there are times like, um, again, I haven't got nearly enough experience with the new Joe's Hammer to say this is a good idea or not. But in the uh, fast uh, first part of third edition, or even before that, uh, I would really like the idea for my slaves darkness to I don't know take loads of chaos warriors. But especially when we got to third edition, it's like right, we're only really the first rank and probably attack because of how um, unit coherency works. Yeah. Chaos yeah. warriors not nearly good enough to just attack for the first rank. Um, etc. etc. The slaves move around the board, but now that you've got the whole, um, I don't know the name of this rule, but you know, the second rank can basically attack as long as the first rank 
half, is within half an inch, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Um, and and that's just opened up for so many units that are on models that are on 32 millimeter bases that um, have an inch, it's well, it's a one inch it's range. 50 mils as well, and one inch range. Mm -hmm. So, like and, the Bulgars. Yeah, Bulgars. Uh, Fiends of Sinesh, I know you mentioned the other day. Uh, yeah. Crypt yeah. Horrors. Yeah, you know, uh, Crypt oh, Horrors. It's going to be a huge one for, uh, for going back to Flesh Eater Corps. It's going to be massive for them. Yeah, like if you did really like um, Crypt Horrors, but never really felt like you could use them. I did a, a video on playing Flesh Eater Corps in third edition, and uh, Crypt Horrors are pretty good in third edition now. They're only uh, 110 points, anyways. That's a bit of a side note 110 there. 110 points plus if you throw them in a um, back, I know we'll go more mm -hmm. into this later, but a bounty hunter battalion to give them an extra uh, damage against mutilation veterans. Well, I'll tell you what, on, on that note, let's really go to the hit. yeah, they're, they're really hit really, really hard. Um, and uh, well, it sort of goes into the next question I'm going to ask as well, which is um, the next question how to uh, build like an army list in this new era of third edition that we've entered, and Part of that is that I've been really enjoying going on the AOS app and just building army lists and stuff because there's so much like what Matt said, a variety now and how you can build your list rather than going like some armies still have this problem, but a lot of armies now aren't always along the lines of, oh, there are two ways to build this army and there's two ways for this army to do really, really well and yeah. no creativity required. But now you, can, you there's, there's so much variety. Like, um, don't get me wrong, like... Um, you might go certain armies might still have their best army list might be the same as it's been for the last six months let's say for example yeah. but you can still make use of other models um in your army and there's also since last time i did a video anyway i think there's been at least like six battle tomes come out and stuff so there's that's yeah. shaping up the meta and stuff as well which is preparing it for this new edition yeah. um but yeah so going into that question um how to build like an army list now in terms of what's changed so for example if you are brand new to third edition obviously there are more changes that have happened like there's things like um reinforced units which basically means you can't um increase the size of a unit um willy-nilly with your whole army you can basically do it four times essentially there's more sort of details on that um but going into 2022 to 2023 season one um, of the General's Handbook in this new part of the edition. What has really changed? Has there been any changes on like how many endless spells you can take? Um, how many battle line you require? Do you know this very, very simple sort of or monsters or anything like that or heroes? No. At, at its base level like that, no. Um, they've kept, kept that core mechanic of it different. What they're changing is how you're going to take that game that everyone if you've play, been playing third already that you know and it's going to change well okay i can do more now with more infantry than uh, like my behemoths it's more changing what people want to bring to fit within that rather than necessarily changing gutting it out and completely changing it again mm. <clears throat> but i think one of the big choices you would make when you are building this though is if you're going to go the the side of like going the veteran heavy Mm. and or you go in the opposite way take the minimum amount and then just take a, a big chunk of uh hard hitters in the bounty hunters or you go with a lot of your five wound uh battle line units i think so it's, it's yeah. that, i think that's gonna be one of the core choices between when you actually are building your list which side you want to focus on battle tactics are also something you need to be thinking about because i know they're a lot harder mm. to score now so you yeah. want to make sure that yeah you're capable of scoring five yeah. yeah it's it's no longer like for example i'll take myself who's played a couple of games of third edition and i'm still kind of in the mindset or i was on going like right how do i score objectives the best not thinking about how to build into battle tactics or grand strategies anything like that just thinking it was purely mm -hmm. only about the objectives i knew battle tactics exist but I don't think I've had a game of third edition yet where I haven't just started to crack on my hero phase and my opponent goes, what's your battle tactic? And I go, oh yeah, I think that you've got all, all grand strategy. Um, I'd also, so, say, I'd also yeah. say that from last, like the last pitch battle, there was a lot more, It was as you were saying, Matt, it was easier to score your mm -hmm. um, battle tactics. 
and it, uh, you'd often see games where people would go five five four five mm -hmm. i'd say you, with this new one as you're saying it's a lot harder i think you could very much see a lot more games where people are scoring three to four battle mm -hmm. tactics rather than the full four to five um, yeah there's there's one that if you go i mean from just playing like a game of it there's mm. one that's i think it's called against the odds isn't it which if you go first in the game it's very easy to score but beyond that out of the, the standard ones from the general's handbook yeah the, they're not the easiest are they which yeah. which is quite i i quite like it i think mm -hmm. um it's a little bit tricky like if you haven't played a lot with battle tactics anyway but it means that you just have to work a bit harder for it which just means like your uh you know your strategy if you spend more time with it pays off a bit you know the harder you work for it um rather than anyone just i think was one of them in the last uh Gemma's handbook if you ran three monsters or something or you it ran was, yeah, it, yeah. It, was, it was three units but if you did three monsters you got an extra point on it so it was, yeah, it was like quite, quite easy to do run, run and hold hands yeah yeah, yeah. Run and, hold and, then, hands. and then you had the other easy one of it was just destroy a battle line unit and it's and if you did it with the monster, you got an extra point. It was they were all really easy, but the new ones they seem to be they're a lot harder to do, but there's there seems to be a bit more counterplay to them as well. Mm -hmm. So when you are designing your list, you design your list to like stop your opponent getting it as well as you getting them. Yeah. And there's, there's, it, it just looks like there's a lot more back and forth, which is what the which seems to be the intent into third anyway, which is just to not have both players being bored at the, in the other person's turn. Mm -hmm. And so so far, they've done a pretty good job with it. Yeah, to be honest, when you're, when you're picking your battle tactic, you're now think, rather than thinking, oh, what can I do this turn? You're looking at the list and being like, right, well, what can I achieve early? What am I working towards for my mid-game tactics? Where, What tactics do I want to leave myself for the end of the game in case I'm on the back foot that I can still achieve? Yeah. Like, it really is... <clears throat> bringing back to, like, the thing you said a while ago, Nagash, is, like, at its core root... The game of chess and i think they're really improving that idea of the fact that you're sat there forward planning rather than just smashing two sides together smashing two sides together then going right it'll be fine i win the priori lost the priori what do i do yeah. now yeah exactly. but, yeah but then there's the other one which is uh i think it's the head-to-head -head, where you put in two of the veteran units against each other mm. i think i think that's that, that's gonna be a good one because you're gonna end up with like two big chunky units going against each other and if you are if you do have one of the Galician veteran units in the bounty hunters one, that one will have the advantage. So you don't always want to take it in expert conquerors. Yeah. To yeah. count as three, you end up getting the one with more damage. So you know what I've not heard anyone talk about yet? I want to say, let me just get my thing open. Is the realm command and realm oh. magic. Mm. Yeah, that's and true. Like they're good for this because everyone's like you know okay let's take the expert conquerors where you get your Galatian veteran unit every model in that unit counts for three it's brilliant for holding objective the re the gaze of Gur new realm spell you halve the number of models that that unit counts for on an objective mm -hmm. so suddenly this thing they're gearing towards you cast that on them and then smash them with unit of bounty hunters you've halved how much they count for and you're hitting them harder yeah like Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's one of those things that I was really into it before this, and I, no one is talking about the realm magic and the realm commands and stuff. The command, uh, if you're you're trying to defend your objectives as well, the command is quite good for the elite units coming at you because yeah. I think it's if you've got a unit of three, like I play Gorgon, so the Gorgon mm -hmm. come in, I think you have to roll equal to or greater than the unit, and then they get attack last applied to them. Yeah. So the Gorgon has charged into your big unit. You do that, suddenly they're attacking last, and you can. Smack them first. It was really nice if you're yeah, going against like your sons of Bayama as well. So you end up with everything swinging oh, again. Yeah, yeah, you get, yeah. And it, on a two plus, everything's swinging against the the, the mega. Which I think it doesn't work against uh, heroes. Or is no. something that, what's the? I've not got that general that Yeah, yeah. But you see, like that's just another rule. If you are, you know, new to third edition, etc., that in the general's handbook, there are you know like an extra spell and an extra command ability available to. You. As I as a spell and a command of this, isn't there? Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Yeah, uh, the unit uh, has to be has to have less than four wounds. Okay. Uh right. Well the unit has to have less than four wounds. Yeah, the one that you're the enemy yeah. unit uh, have less than four wounds. Yeah. Less, no. yeah. And it has more, yeah, it's has one of those more than ten using against another Galatian veteran unit, it's when you're clashing two large yeah. units. That's where it's gonna pay off, really. Yeah. 
but it's very situa situational. Yeah. But it is when you can do it, it's very good. Yeah, yeah. You can, it's gonna be one of those things you oh. never use, and then just suddenly agree. Do I just go? Okay, you're back. Uh, yeah, you're yeah. back. That's fine. Sorry, bro. Uh, the good players uh, will remember when to use it. Might even only use it like one time in a, in a GT, but mm. they will remember. <laughs> yeah, and then you're like, oh, that exists. Yes. But if you do remember, it's an extra tool, isn't it? It's yeah. Awesome. yeah. Um, that's why, like, something to say as well. Like, if you are brand new to this or you are getting back into the game, definitely get yourself AOS reminders. It's free. Mm. If you do want to donate some money towards it, you can chuck some money towards the guy um on there but it's basically just this lovely website someone's came up with apologies i can't remember the name and um you type in your army list and then it tells you exactly what you have to do and when in terms of abilities and a really nice layout that's not just paragraph after paragraph of or all being mumble jumbo so definitely yeah. get yourself that yeah. even if you're new or i don't know like, even if you're um let's say you've been playing the game for quite a while and you thought like i don't know i want to take Doors of Cain to a tournament, haven't really played much Doors of Cain, just get it. Just helps you out so much. It's, it's pretty uh, useful anyway, because there's, uh, there's loads of things that you have to do, say, in specific like sections of, of the phase. So, like, start the hero phase, end of the yeah. movement phase, and it's just good to, like, it's mm -hmm. just good as a reminder. It's very annoying if you're at a tournament and you go, right, okay, now I'm going to do this ability, and then your reader's like, oh, it's maybe at the start of the phase. There you go. Yeah. yeah. It's like with uh, the primordial call for Beast of Chaos, that's you end up doing doing that start and yeah it's just it's just getting where, where you need to actually go hmm. and it will just help you so much in the terms of uh i don't know let's say you're playing ostrich brain reapers you haven't played them for a while and then obviously you've got your train feature and think oh there's it do i do this at the start of the battle rounds at the start of the hero let me just go find it it will just have it really nicely yeah. laid out exactly where I'm in a shell when do i activate this <laughs> yeah it's, exactly when do i do this how do i not forget that um so yeah I, that I, sorry i started playing big wag um with third edition and there's just mm. so much going on in the hero phase and it has to be done in the right order or else you know i teleport someone across the board and oh shit oh sorry i forgot to uh load it up with the buffs yeah yeah, yeah okay yeah um it happens all the time and, yeah like exactly it's like there's nothing worse because you you know you can't go back <laughs> like, yeah. uh, or if, if your opponent is really nice and you um you do go back and stuff you'll you'll feel a little bit gooey whatever mm. um yeah. but yes yeah, so only when you win <laughs> only only when you oh yeah there's yeah. The, uh, the being on the flip side of that the best thing to do if you are you, the opponent is you let them go back and they don't get what they wanted anyway and then you've been a really nice person and nothing bad's <laughs> happened to you and it's yeah. uh, the best of both worlds you get oh dear oh, oh that's really cool no. um but that came back far as well. And uh, right, okay, so how to build an army list? That was the question we asked. Um, I think the other thing I want to say as well is in case you are like new to third edition as well, um, if you were playing second edition, the idea of taking a battalion in your army was very much like, oh, does my army have any battalions that are worth taking? Quite a lot of armies, probably not. Um, in third edition, you're you're always taking some battalion. Is it a, a battalion that lets you? One of the bonuses could be it lets you drop your whole army in one, or it could be um, a battalion like we've seen coming up. Which I, I want to get into this a bit later when we go into the meta. But essentially, there's one that's really good for infantry, one very good for dealing damage to infantry, which you'll commonly see. And then there are um, even uh, not like your whole army fits in battalion. I know I was building a night haunt list on the app yesterday. And um, I was like, right, I want the um, <coughs> potentially the um, one that's good for Glacian veterans and one that's good, the bounty hunter one for killing Glacian veterans. Yeah. And then I was like, right, there's two battalions and one. And then I was looking at my list and I was like, oh, but actually, there's a battalion here that I can just chuck the rest of my heroes in because why not? I get an extra like artifact. Yeah. yeah, like it's it's definitely worth um, it's definitely worth looking at. Battalions are definitely a thing. Mm -hmm. You will be taking at least one of them in your list unless your list is incredible obscured but most most armies it's should be very able to hard to build a list that doesn't fit into one yeah. of the yeah, yeah. I would you have to try yeah i'll go working on that later yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then the second part of the challenge is trying to win a game um <laughs> well. but yeah so, so that's that and then 
Next question I want to ask, and anyone like joining and watching this, feel free to ask any questions in the chat, is that um, in terms of like game mechanic changes, now I know there's, there's a lot that could probably be say, said here, but I just mean in terms of third edition, really, you've got things like, um, um, I was going to say, even just starting with endless spells. So let's say you're coming from second edition, going into third. Endless spells used to be along the lines of, Oh, do I really want to pay for an endless spell because my opponent could just use it against me? There was always that conversation. But now I believe in third edition, um, your wizard is basically without getting into the precise writing of the rule, your wizard is essentially linked to the spell, unless it goes out of range for them, which is kind of your fault if that happens. Um, yeah. You're not under threat from the enemy as long as yeah. you don't hurt yourself with the spell, essentially. Yeah. Which is pretty much here yeah, you can at least control it mm -hmm. mm. Like, exactly everything is everybody is still affected by the endless spell but it's not like first edition where you just get it thrown back into your lines be like oh no yeah. there's a purple sun now it runs into my big blob of something now it's you're the damage. one who paid for it <laughs> yeah yeah it's uh um... you throw it back <laughs> Yes, yeah, so you get you get to decide the placement of it all the time, yeah. um, as long as you essentially don't move your hit your wizard away. And the range is something, isn't it? Like thirty inches or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So with, that, with that's the boards as well. It's 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 pretty hard to not be in that range. Yeah, I suppose the only thing is if your wizard dies, does the spell disappear or does it? it becomes wild. What's what's referred to as wild, yeah. uh, and that basically that goes back to the old rules where I control it, you control it, I control it, you control it. Got you. So, so it's quite... the same if it goes outside the range. Yeah, yeah. Got you, yeah. And then uh, just side on that question then. So if it goes outside the range, if you bring your wizard back in range, does that connect them again or? Mm, uh, does it? Or does I it... don't know. Sure. I was going to say, yeah. Just yeah, I don't think that's going to come up. Um, yeah. I don't think it does, actually. I think it's just um, got quite a bit of for it. Yeah, hang on. I am not entirely sure. I just wondered there might be That's a, a good one. There might be an obscured moment in a game where some army has an ability to move an enemy unit. Like, what's that blood bind thing where you get someone to run towards you or something for the uh, devolve? Uh, yeah, devolve, devolve, yeah, devolve. Boil. Yeah, yeah, both those things um, makes yeah. that wizard run away, and then the purple sun that I bound, everyone's going to have a. Ah, uh, they have to run forward. Yeah. But... yeah. Um, the really obscure <laughs> for um, Skaven that removes a character, uh, removes a character or a unit uh, for a whole ter uh, for a whole battle yeah. round mm. or turn. Mm. So then you could remove them away from their endless spell and put and force them to go back because they turn back up on their side of the table edge. Oh. So yeah. a, a very obscure thing, which I'm sure is not going to be what some <laughs> people build in to try and do, but I just wondered. It's always an interesting thing. Mm. Um, but yeah, and then you've got things like as well of like those little changes to endless spells, and endless spells are good these days. You'll be seeing them a lot on the board. There's one called the Purple Sun, which uh, will be coming back because it is very, very good for what yeah. it does. Because a lot of these endless spells are, I would say, very cheap from what they've got, they've got, a, lot, they've got a lot cheaper, they've gone down They're massively. Dirty, like, cheap. Mm. Yeah, what, one of the changes that I quite like to the endless spells has been uh, cogs. Mm. Yeah, it's gone from an extra spell cast to. Uh, Reroll, which Cast, a lot, it? yeah, it's because a lot a lot of armies haven't don't have access to any much much in the way of reroll. No, that's true, and especially with um, is it reroll and binding as well? Or is it just casting? Probably just casting. casting yeah. yeah, and is it for like all wizards in range, or is it just the one minute? Yeah, all wizards. Oh, that's good. Yeah, so it's, yeah. It's, it's 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 solid now. But Zeech likes that. <laughs> yeah, Zeech already yeah. had it, but. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's like, the right. Go, yeah. Yeah. I get you. Um, Still. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's nice to have that redundancy, isn't it? And then you've got things like, without going like, too deep into this, because you talk about it all day, and I have probably done a video about it a while ago, but you got things like heroic actions, which basically means like you're here at the start of the um, battle round, you collect one of your heroes to do an ability. It could be things like healing, could be things that boost their combat effectiveness, get an command point, unbind enemy spells. Endless spells that could be useful for this, etc. But I heroic think... actions are just something that allow you to kind of do something in your opponent's turn and to try not to forget about what you can say about. 
I think a key thing about hero captions to note as well is they're at the start of the hero phase, but if you have other things that are at the start of the hero phase, you can pick what goes first. Yeah. So yeah. it's very niche, but like Wurgog Pro I like to use the Wurgog Prophet. He stares at people and he can hurt himself at the start of the hero phase, but then I can hero cover after, which everyone hates, so he just yeah. heals back up to full again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> or uh, kill him. You just keep rolling for his dead. Yeah. Keep no. rolling till he's dead. Dear God, man. What are you? You're not playing. You're not playing, you're not playing no, the no, no, no. ultra player. <laughs> you, you roll till they're dead, and then you heal back up so you can roll right. till the next people are dead. Okay. That's great, yeah. yeah. But if you're they're not dead, you roll till you're dead. There's no. Oh, yeah. You don't stop. No, there's no, <laughs> no in between. No one ever stops. <laughs> you can't stop him. Um, and then you got things like monstrous rampages, where essentially there was something for your heroes to do. Now there's something for your monsters to do. And that yeah. is. Um, I was going to say that happens when, but it happens charge. at different times, doesn't it? End of the you've charge got, phase, I believe. Is it in the charge yeah. phase? End of charge, end of charge phase, yeah. phase yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that can be things like basically you stump on an enemy unit, D3 mortal wounds. Um, you can roar on an enemy so they're That's too difficult. scared to issue or receive a command right, ability, yeah. which is very useful. Um, you've got one that helps them get bonuses against other monsters. Got the uh, smash terrain. Yeah, you got you, If you're really, really fed up with. Um, you know, the Iden FD can ships and you just want to smash and get off the board. Unfortunately, it doesn't do that, but it will remove the effect or OBR or something like that. Yeah. Um, or, 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 the, or the Skaven Holes. Yeah, or the Skaven Holes as well. So if you go, oh, I don't, let's say you're, you've got a heavy monster list for whatever reason and you go, oh, there's a Skaven R hole in the back of my territory. I don't really want to go all forward and leave it. Maybe just have one of your monsters hang back a little bit, just smash it yeah. and just then move them forward. Just cock there, it'd be fine. Yeah. Mm. Is that, yeah. yeah. That is right. also shows that these cheapest sort of monsters, where you have to ask yourself, is it actually a monster? Those yeah. are quite or behemoth, isn't it? I suppose not. Yeah. Is it monster? Yeah, monster. monster? Uh, yeah, it's just here, the the monsters of rampages are just monsters. You don't need to oh, right, okay. them. Interesting little side note. I think speaking of the Skaven Narholes, there's a battle plan um, which is called the, the Nidius Paths or something, mm -hmm. which gives you four. The objectives become like Skaven holes that everyone can travel through. Oh, wow. Technically, if you had uh, two Skaven players playing each other, you could have ten separate holes that's, that's, that's jump through on the map. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you would never be able to teleport though, because the board is just full of rats. <laughs> yeah, you'd, 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 everyone would be teleporting around with it. You'd lose who is who. It would be a mess. But I'd love it. Yeah. I want to see it. Yeah. On the topic of the endless spells. Um, yeah. You can regain control at the start of the hero phase. You can. Okay. Yeah. Oh, excellent. Okay, that's good. I yeah. just thought that's quite an interesting yeah. thing. In case it oh, the one it's... that we've not mentioned about in the yes. spells is that in third edition, priests can now get rid of them as well, not just wizards. True. Oh, I yeah. did not know that. So it's yeah, that really the hero faction as well. One of the hero factions oh. is you can yeah. unbind. Yeah. 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 So yeah. instead of having, obviously, there's some armies out there that don't have any wizards as there. So you know, Corbin, for example, they might have had like the odd mechanic here and there that might allow them to get rid of an ender spell, etc. Um, yeah, right. or unbind now they can just flat out do it then so that's pretty good yeah, yeah which, which is nice um, also, uh, yeah. there's a unique heroic actions out there which a few of them are quite good the fire slayer is one i quite like uh lets them act as if they're on the they roll a six for the rune that's quite good or i have a war, um a big warg yeah. one that lets me generate warg points instead of the heroic action but yeah i'll definitely yeah. make sure you check what you can do with those yeah, that, that's a great great thing to mention like um do check if there's been a white dwarf update for your army and you might go like how, how do i do that etc um if you do get the you can obviously search up online um or if you get the uh, like the warhammer plus ah, thing i mean I, yeah. I haven't got that yet but i i think that's probably just really good value yeah. i will i will get it at it some point the, the app is actually honestly pretty good it's it's solid yeah, it's a couple it's of mistakes from the army game but it's it's way better than the, the aos one's so much better than the 4k one yep and if you were Still reinforce uh, warp blotchers ales, which you really can't. <laughs> they stop yeah. that, but according to the app, you still can. So yeah, yeah. There's, there's, there's yeah. yeah, it's a lot better than it was when it first came out. And it's also, if you um, you also get obviously all the animations, which now there's quite a few. So you know that's built up over time. Nice, um, yeah. yeah, exactly. And then we mentioned the changes to like um, I think yeah, help. It was it's one one of the big changes that we've had for. Uh, what is it 3.2 we're calling it for mm -hmm. yeah is the proving ground mm -hmm. so yep. that's at 
the start of every battle round, uh, the, the person that goes second picks, they can pick an objective that can only be taken by Glacier, uh, Glacier vet Veterans. Which you don't, mm -hmm. I would, I would personally wouldn't do it on a few of my lists. But if you are building quite a GV heavy list, then you know you, you pick the ones that say your opponent doesn't have any GV units on, and they can just go easily take it. Yeah, and it can be nasty on a few of the missions that are very low on objectives. Yeah. Can you uh, can you sit, pick the same objective twice? I can't uh, yeah. Oh, okay, I thought so. It can only yeah. be each objective can only be selected once per round. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, thing, again, that's just an, an extra one bonus point. What I need to look into that I don't know yet is if someone already controls an objective, but then you select that and they haven't got any models on there, do you still control the objective or do you lose control I, of the objective? You don't lose control because it's like we, we describe it as planting a flag and your flag is there until someone mm -hmm. takes your flag out and puts their flag in. Okay. Yeah, but what can happen is you have one dude, one Galician yeah. fat dude, like mm -hmm. simple cultist, and there is like a bloody Archeon the ever chosen is on the objective. Mm -hmm. Archeon is like, what am I doing here? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I cannot control this. <laughs> yeah. And another change to objectives as well is that you no longer start the game controlling them, do you? You do have to spend a turn to plant that flag at the end, like what Matt was saying, rather than, I think at the start of third edition, it was the case of just like, wherever you deployed a unit, they planted the flag there and then? Uh, that's still there. That's still there. Is it? I thought it you was. You still control them while deploying, basically at the start of the hero phase. Is it the oh, right. I thought they changed that. Yeah, I thought no, they changed that's it. that's still in. Uh, somewhere I was looking for contesting objectives. It was still in there. That's fine. While well, we're looking for that, is there any other sort of like mechanics? Sorry. Are there any sort of other mechanics you can think of? Like we mentioned the whole sort of there's more choices with your units uh, now because there's more in range to fight uh, with that need to be basically the, placed around rank. From the second to third edition changes, there's the whole command points overhaul. Yes, there is obviously a, a lot of that. So basically you can spend... Uh, what is it? So you get essentially a lot more command points in your army. There's more things you can spend command points on. You can spend it in your opponent's turn. You can spend it obviously in your turn. Um, you cannot duplicate a command ability, I believe. You can't do the same command ability more than once. If you're Osirak Bone Reapers, they've changed it to fit them. So you can do the same command ability more than once, but you can't essentially stack two command abilities on a certain unit so they aren't going to be punished too badly by that change um there's so an answer to the objectives <clears throat> yep so after setup is complete but before the first battle round begins each player gains control of all objectives that are within six inches of any friendly models and more than six inches from all enemy models so yes you can gain control in your setup however uh in addition at the end of each turn after the battleship phase you must check to see if you've gained control of any objectives so yes you can gain control in setup but you don't you no longer get control of an objective until the end of yeah all right yeah you have to study the, and it's the end of each turn so you can gain control of an object of an objective in your opponent's turn yeah as well so yeah but cool. you cannot do it anymore by just teleporting then charging and having basically getting two objectives yeah yeah that's what enough was a possibility last time yeah okay yeah, yeah. okay and then uh, the uh, next question is going to be how to win a game obviously that's the idea that we all have when we go to play and what i will say is that i am looking to do a other video in the future that will be about more sort of competitive play style in um you know age sigma for edition general's handbook 2022 to 2023 season one um and a much more competitive focus but generally in the terms of when it comes to uh winning a game we've got things like um what we kind of already mentioned like in terms of the battle tactics and the grand strategies if you are coming from second edition to third edition we've already explained that so you can go back and check that out if you'd like to it's not all about just the objectives on the board now there are uh, missions and objectives you need to uh, fulfill essentially and um i think what i was going to lead on to then rather than that just being a very open-ended question because we've already kind of answered it 
is what the meta is. And we've already mentioned things like veterans um, mm -hmm. and we've got the anti-veterans, which I know this is a battalion, but, you know, bounty hunters. So we've mentioned Glacian veterans so much. Why are they going to be very important in this new edition? The, the objective thing is a, a key thing that, you know, there's going to be times where only your Galatian veterans can contest. So if you don't have any, your your if your opponent keeps going second, they can keep just shutting down objectives. Um, yep, that's yep. very true. Much like you don't have any in your list, let's... Uh, much like with the last edition where you could have um, extra command, uh, victory points if you did a certain strategy using a monster, so a lot of them now have extra victory points if you do it with a Glacian veteran unit. Yeah. Uh, not really. Yeah. It's, a, it's, it's like two or three thing, of them. I think it was, was three. I thought there was only one. Was but, it one? Yeah. One that like, you can get There are some points. you have to do. Or oh, maybe it was some. Maybe it was some of the battle plans if you actually. Yeah. There's, there's also there's also a, there is a lot of battle tactics mm. that. It, yeah, yeah. are involved with like Glacian mm -hmm. veterans as well. So, like, they're not they are like, like, they're veterans. contested by it, and then contesting it with. Yeah, and there's things like if you go for the Congress of the Realms, either is the Congress of the Realm the battalion for Glacian veterans, or something Conquerors. Oh, um, you got bounty hunters, and then what's the Glacian yeah, veterans? Expert conquerors. conquerors. Expert Conquerors. Yeah. yeah, when when the count was three models on an so, objective. Yes, exactly. So with all of this, you may yeah. be thinking, why would you not only just take Glacian Veterans because they sound like they've got a huge buff? So there is a counter to the Glacian Veterans, which are the Bounty Hunters. Now, essentially, for Bounty Hunters, you just need two to three units of troops. Now, troops is very, very um, open-fielded to what you can put into that. Essentially, basically, as long as they're not a monster, artillery, or a leader slash hero, and I think it's not. I think it's not a behemoth. Behemoth as well. Sure you can put monster. Yep. I think. Yeah. I think it's behemoth. Yeah. So you can put monsters yeah, so in it. Yeah. Can't you can't just put like small yeah. monsters in there. Yeah. Yes. Generally, you so don't want that... the single monsters. No, exactly. But you can put things like Varengard in there, for example, as and yeah. as small as things like Graveguard, if you want to. But yeah. what they get is when they go to attack. Oh yeah, um, population veterans. Yeah, they get Go trek fits into the bounty they hunters. Get, yeah. Uh, <laughs> is he not not he's not just dirty. No. Yeah, you should not be giving that man an extra. Absolutely not. Is he not a leader? No. no is he? Uh, no. He's not. Not. no. Yeah, because you're because right. a lot of people used to put him in the uh like immune to monsters rampage as one in the previous edition. Yeah, yep. no, yeah. you can yeah. give him an extra damage now. Oh that's that's dirty. That's so dirty. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> he really he really needs <laughs> four. Yeah. Yeah, it's, what, it's what you want. You want that man really did not. Yeah. Yes, no, I, 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 I quite like, like the... Um, uh, just, just run away from him. <laughs> yeah. Don't, you make, just yeah. don't go close to him when he can't get to you, so... Yeah, honestly. Can the men even use the extra yeah. damage? Like... <laughs> yeah. Calm Dim Prince. Well, people who haven't... Anything to stop the movement, that's what you want. So stop him. Yeah. Exactly. Now. But for people oh, who haven't read it, I was going to say what Bounty Hunters does is it does give you plus one damage against those Glacian veterans. So when we're all saying plus one damage, that's what it does. Um, so that is the counter to Glacian veterans. Um, so you might be taking, oh, you know, take Lacen because they're great for object a score and objectives and everything else. But um, the enemy can, in some cases, literally double their damage against you, which is why there is some talks of the meta maybe be not for everyone, but for some people going very light on Galatian veterans because they don't want to mm -hmm. yeah. give any potential battle taxes away to the enemy because there are some like about killing uh, enemy Galatian veteran units, etc. Um, but at the same time, they're great for scoring those objectives and they're great for scoring battle tactics. So it's a real sort of um, swings and roundabouts in that sort of case mm -hmm. of... And there's, there's no straight answer of going like... You know, Oh, should you not really take many then? So the enemy can't really get those bonuses. But if you don't really take many, then you can't take advantage of um, the expert conquerors or this... the battle taxes themselves. And that does make this huh? general's handbook very good. Yeah. Like, yeah. even the, the big downside of last edition, last version of the general's handbook was 
Okay, so you take monsters to get bonus points, but your enemy also gets bonus points. So basically the bonus points you get are nullified. Mm. Yes. Yep. It, very much like that. That's a I lot think less I did, we, Yeah, I think this new Snow Hammock is... I think it's been written pretty well. And it shapes up the meta in an interesting way. And not just... Um, I mean, clearly there's a there focus on infantry, but like we said, the mm -hmm. infantry, yes, um, on that. But then people can specialize on just killing infantry if, if they would like to as well. Um, so there are two sides to that coin. Sh um, shooting is still quite yes. strong. Just being able to snipe off enemy bounty hunters is pretty strong in the game. It's very strong, yeah. Because that's now. the one thing about oh, bounty you. hunters. They become targets. Hmm. Yeah. Big targets. But if they're targeting your bantams, they're not targeting your yeah. veteran units. So mm. it's it's one it's one it's one of those. But yeah. I, I, I do really like that both versions of third have been like vastly different games. Definitely, and that's nice. And hopefully, when they do like the new one, either in six months' time or twelve months' time, it's it, again it shakes it up so it's like totally different. So it might focus more on like say your bigger monstrous infantry rather than just your rank and file. It, so you end up with like loads of annihilators, bulls, trolls, all that stuff. The plus four wound models. Yeah, it's, it's like what we were saying with you know just wait and your army will be good with the met with the the general's handbook shaking it up so low, so much. Uh, you've got you know you don't necessarily have to wait as long for your the way you play no. to come up. And 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 the fact that so far all of the third edition books that GW released this time around, they've been quite good and they've mm -hmm. been they've been fairly balanced. It's not we've not had the issue where like like there has been in forty k where. A new book comes out. That's it. That is the best. Mm -hmm. It's just been. It's a, it's a good book. It's it's solid. It's fun to play against. It's fun yeah. to play with. There's there's options on how you want like to build that. your army in it as well. It's not just railroaded to one certain way. And no. I think what is quite nice. I haven't heard the terms of the bin man and the sin man, which I think the honest <laughs> war gamer came up with in terms of books. Mm -hmm. Like you know, because it generally was, isn't it? Like one book would come out. Like let's say the not this Sylvaneth book, but the one before that would come yeah. out. And it was worse than the. Well, like, well the big one with that one. was was what Head of Knights and the Daughters of Came on when they came out at the same time and. Yeah, yeah, that's very good. Yeah, the, I have not. From what I've seen, I haven't seen that problem. I've seen things where it's like these two books come out and it'll be like a who's the winner and loser, and it's like, well, this one's slightly better, but. That, that's pretty much it, or twenty percent better, yeah. or whatever statistics it's, you want to like give. It's just that that's just a certain build. There's like loads of other builds, like scaling yeah, something. It's yeah, pretty, I think it, they're, they're looking pretty even. I think yeah. it's more of a when the book first comes out, there's a very clear way that's good, whereas the other ones it might take a bit more time for people to figure yeah. out. I have yeah. an interesting question for you guys. Um, because obviously some of you are coming back into it and stuff. I'd certainly say, with like looking at the Skaven book and certainly the Silver Net, I wouldn't say, whilst it's a good thing that there isn't a clear one way to play the armies anymore or one way to build a list just to do well. I would say to a degree it's made it slightly more complicated to come into a faction though because mm. there is a lot more compl complexity of trying to work out the different dynamics of how different units yeah. work different heroes so like on one hand for us who you know for several of us we've played the game for a while we understand we can work these things out because we have that kind of background knowledge for someone new it might be a lot more complicated as a, a yeah. No, yeah i suppose but on the on the back of that though you've got like say the new Vanguard boxes and the stack collection boxes, because mm. previous previously in like second and like maybe the start of third, you're spamming certain units, mm. so that so you're just buying one unit, just just one of the units. But with especially now in the 3.2 or the Jones about 22, you can get the Vanguard box and you kind of know it's 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 there, it's there or thereabouts and it should work. You, you know, you're not having to specialize, which I think is a lot more new player friendly than say it is just like buying a load of dragons yeah 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 so it's it's a lot cheaper to get into and you know it, there is a lot more complexity in it but you know if you're building up slowly and you're just buying the units that you like you can actually use the units that you like and you're not going to be at a back foot all the time because yeah, at, yeah. The, at the end of the day having like loads of models that you love on the table is and fighting against another person's got loads of models that they love on the table it's that's that's the game for me I yeah, love that. yeah. But that's why we've got into this game i think might be some of us but i think most of us 
didn't once upon a time walk past Warhammer store and have a look at it or whatever. And when, look, when you first saw models, I'm pretty sure most people weren't looking at it going, oh my God, there's probably a game behind this and I'll be really good at it. It was, you know, this model looks really cool. I want this. Like, yeah. so, you, so you can do that now. And I think what's really nice when you're going through these books, basically what Ben was saying, is that so, um, there's not... I ever bought. <laughs> oh, 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 wow. Wow, yeah. Are they still, is that still a new box, is it? Like, are they, are they built yet, or...? I've, I've rebased them. Wow. I've got circles now. <laughs> that's sick. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah, stripped them down and rebased them. That's truly playing with the models that you love. And I think I think that's great, because I think, like, I'm sure we've all read through our army books and stuff, um, and you've gone, like, where you would just skip a page because that unit's really bad, you might now look at it again, and you might even take it. Don't get me wrong, if it's Black Knights, still not taking them. But there is, I would say, Alf, yeah. Let's say out of five units, you would just skip out of a book. You wouldn't even consider them. I would say probably about three out of those five, you would now maybe think about. Because my, um, my, my, my one for that is in the Stormcast book, the Vindicators, the battle line troops with the great swords. Yeah. Yep. They are amazing in a bounty hunter's battalion. Because their whole thing is fighting against units that are bigger than them. Yeah. Oh, wow. And they get extra attacks against units that are bigger than them. And now adding that, you're getting extra attacks plus extra damage. Like they are a fantastic unit that previously were terrible. Which which uh, are the ones with the uh, massive spears again? Because those will be disgusting in bounty hunters. Yeah, uh, decimators, I believe. No, no, uh, I thought it began with P. Uh, protectors. Protectors. Protect. That's the one. Yeah, yeah. yeah because the, those they've got five attacks. They'd be two damage a pop. That's yeah. Uh, that's right. yeah. The decimators again, though. The big thing with the vindicators is their um, I think it's their trumpet or it might be their banner. Um, puts their rally to a four or five up as well. Wow. Do you have to take them in tens for that, though? Yes. But yeah. you want to. And who cares? They can now all fight. But, but they, look, yeah, they also <laughs> look really good as well. They look superb. They look fantastic. Like, honestly, two units of ten of those in a list are, would be fantastic. Yeah. 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 Well, Sorry, well, I, I digress yeah. sideways, but it is back yeah. to that point. Like, when they first came out, everyone looked at them and like, they look cool. But they don't really have a purpose right now as a unit. Whereas mm -hmm. now they're fantastic. I'd, I'd argue they're fantastic. Probably the, one of the better battle lines. Not General, what you have to do for with Games Workshop things is if you start, get the new shit because they are going to be bloated as always. Because, well, Games Workshop is a company. Yeah. yeah. So you yeah. want to sell the new stuff. Yeah, the, the, the model company, not a game company. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, just start with that and then. Just build out to the older stuff. Like, mm. get your van vanguard for your battle line and the, and the hero. Like, generally there is like one or two heroes you generally need. They're quite easy to get. Then get some of the newer stuff, mm -hmm. and then build out to this, the older stuff. Because you can never go wrong with the generally never go wrong with the newer stuff. No, they generally, they generally make it good as long as it's not Slanesh. Yeah, but hey, Slanesh dropped think, down in points for, by yeah, 25%. Yeah, that's really nice. Oh, wow, that's yeah. good. So, yeah. probably... That's a lot of free points. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah I've been about 250 points a list on each of my lists. Yeah. But like, but when they were released the new stuff, the models are beautiful. They're like some mm -hmm. some of the best models that get GDB released. Glutos yeah. was great. Like the pain bringers and twin souls are fantastic, and like the bliss, the the new seekers, they've been like they're so much fun to paint. They're so much fun. They're a bit of a pain to build, but they're, they're a lot of fun to paint, and they're, they're good. To, they're, they're fun to play with. Yeah, they, they yeah. might not be the best, but they're, they're, they're a lot of fun. Yeah, and, now and in, the, it's in good. the end, in my opinion, the best players are the be are the players that play one faction pretty much all the time. Like, they can master it, don't they? Mm. Yeah. Right. I'm afraid I'm too much of a butterfly to want to fly to every other army yeah. to uh, be able to be one of those people. But I like I just like chaos. I just love chaos. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, chaos is just one or two armies, isn't it? So it's easy to keep track of. There was this once upon a time as a destruction player, you could probably say that. Um, you know, there was and like just forty percent of my army. I I just play destruction. Yeah. If you're a destruction player, all yeah. you're playing is what am I putting with Kragnos now? That's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. I, I do not own Kragnos yet. I keep buying him up, but I, I still don't have Kragnos. Yeah, Kragnos upsets me because when he was special, he's like, it was like, ooh, is this going to be like Beast of Chaos? Oh, it's yeah. amazing. No, I think, absolutely not. 
upset. Um, so one of one of the people, someone I know that plays, is just keeps getting annoyed that new centaurs keep coming out for everyone else. Of every other <laughs> faction, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. every other faction apart from beasts, or when the new uh, Agroid Myrmidon things came out. Yep. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I'll see you good. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was not so fun. Um, and I think uh, to be honest, like I say, we're gonna look at doing a um a video maybe next weekend, maybe a later date, talking about like how to competitively build army lists and how to maybe talk about you know armies you would take to a tournament. So I feel like we've covered the meta, you know, as a basic sort of summary of it quite well. Is there anything else anyone wants to say about you know the meta? Obviously, this is a conversation going on forever, and that's why there's gonna be a yeah. Yeah. Right we're on this. Corn, corn spine incarnates need it need a need a spotlight for a bit. Mm, yeah. They are added to the core rules basically. Uh, let me see. There are currently only have one. Hmm. Or what are they technically called again? Um, they are just called incarnate. Yeah, incarnate. Yeah, yeah, incarnates. And the corn spine incarnate is currently the only one. Mm -hmm. but they are the the oh, very good apparently yeah, yeah you need for... the scenery box for it don't you? Yeah. yeah yeah currently yeah and it's it's... Shame, I'd, I'd have picked the model if, if they just oh, released it separately because yeah. it's going to be enough finish it mm -hmm. yeah it's going to be it's going to be become separate at some point but the whole point is right now it's basically locked behind a pretty big paywall yeah. Can this... you have you have exactly. options for that take yeah. it Buy a one thirty inch base, stick stick something on it, be done. Yeah, exactly. As long as you're going to the conversion games version tournament, you're fine. Yeah. And yeah. I think and the, even then if you build it out of spare Bruce. spare spruce, you're gonna yeah. be that's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. What I would also say about I mean, to be honest, I've never really played against one in that box that came out when I definitely wasn't playing any games. So a bit of an outside on it. But what I would say is I know Games Workshop does tend to put like very strong heroes behind paywalls or something in those big army boxes, but I feel like putting in a box of a bunch of scenery, don't get me wrong, I really like scenery, and I want to one day when I have my own house have really cool tables with really nice scenery. But um, for people who you know don't have space to certainly play at home or anything like that, I know they could just sell the scenery and stuff, but they, they haven't really got any use for it. Like, yeah. I'd say they, like... the average player doesn't doesn't have their own scenery. Yeah, no. yeah, exactly. I might not have space for it. I, might, I don't know. You can just sell it on, but like what you just said there, Matt, there's less of a market to sell that onto. Yeah, because because you're not because I've picked up words here before, like super cheap and cheap in boxes. Mm. Yeah, but I think but what one of the good things that GDB have been doing for both 40k and AOS has been like Warcry and mm. Kill Team. Yeah. Because you can have that at home. It's it's small board. It's what twenty two yeah, inches by forty inches. You can just do it on a coffee table, and then you get a little bit of scenery for it. Most of the time, it's quite it's more uh, like vertical mm -hmm. than it is horizontal, which is nice, and it doesn't take up almost that much room. It's a lot, you, it's very cool scenery can, as well. Yeah, you can fit all the yeah, scenery yeah. in in like a small in a smallish tub. That's what I've got, but I've, yeah. got, I've got I've got quite a bit of scenery at home as well. I've got my own table and stuff, but like when I'm play when I did play Warcraft when I was in a smaller house and didn't have that much space, you could just play on a coffee table and same with Kill Team, and it's it's yeah. good for it's good fun because you can knock, because if you both know the rules of the game, you can knock them out in half an hour. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I love Warcry and that sort of terms. And if like for example, if you're watching this video, you might be uh, like you know very busy with work and all those sorts of things, and you go, oh, I'm not really too sure if I am going to have time to play any age but play Warcry or something, because you're still getting that sort of game fix in, and you can, like Ben just said, you can, once you know the rules, you can play in half an hour. When you're new to it, it takes you an hour. So you, you can it's play not, it's, it's not a massive time commitment, but, no. you also get, you, but you also get to paint a lot of different kind of models as well. Yeah, so you can build not many models like, either. Different models. Yeah, like you could go like, um, uh, let's say, you've always liked the look of Iron Jaws, but you go, oh, I'm not going to do a whole army of Iron Jaws for this, that, or the other. I don't have anywhere to store it, or I've already got too many army. You do like a war band, you know, or, or like something new and shiny comes out. Like, um, I don't know. Let's even just say when the Luminous Realm Lords come out, you go, oh, they look really cool, but I've got enough armies. Just do a war band for them, you know, yeah. have some fun. And they did a few war cry boxes, didn't they? So you're not buying loads of big yeah. boxes of units just to use one model from or something. So Which it's not nice. too bad. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So... Yeah. 
with that, um, I'm going to go on to a subscriber question now. We've just got a couple of them. Um, so I thought they're quite nice to ask. If anyone is, like I say, um, if you're watching this in advance or anything like well, not advance, or if you're watching this in the future um, and you have a question that you feel like maybe we didn't answer today or on a different subject about, you know, getting into the game and the game mechanics and all those sorts of things, put it in the comments of this video and then I will try and answer it best I can in case we missed that for you. Um, but we've got a question from Jack. So he says, first question would be what three factions you would never play and why? So that's quite an interesting one because usually it is what are your three favorite fractions, but he's going to go straight for the negatives. So what are the three factions you'd play and why? So my, I'll tell you what, before we go into that, I'll just say the other subscribers question, which is more of a mechanical question in case anyone's, just want to watch this for advice. Um, it's just asking and understanding ward saves and rend. So I know that's quite a generic sort of question, but ward saves along the lines of essentially the death save, something like that might have been called it, um, an after save, damage prevention save, and you can't stack them. So unless not, anymore, any, no. not anymore, nope. And there's things like um, it's a lot of the time you go to roll your save roll and um, you fail and then you've got like say your death save but it's all been called a ward save now and usually it's a six up there might be something that makes it a, a five up there might be something that allows you to reroll once for it but it is essentially just your last chance to try and not take damage and um with so that's basically what a ward save is with terms of rend essentially rend is probably the most complicated thing i found along with battleshock when i got into the game because so if someone's got minus two rend that minuses to the save roll of the unit you're attacking. But let's say they've got a save of a three and you chuck minus two render them, their save does not go to a one, it goes to a five. Because when it says minus rend, essentially what it means is worsen the enemy save, not look at it as maths and just go three minus two or whatever. Um, and that's basically how that works. And a lot of the times it happens if someone's got like a big lance, it's very good at piercing through the enemy armor, you know, so the more rend, the easier it's going to break through the enemy armor and get to the nice squishy meat bits. And I feel like that's probably a good way to sum it up. Is there anyone that can explain yeah. rend a bit better? Yeah. Um, what uh, do you have a couple of games you learn it as well? Like, yeah. So it starts getting complex when you start adding, when you start like getting saved, the save stacking and stuff like that. Hmm. When you're doing like all out defense and mystic shield yeah. and all that, that's when it starts getting like slightly complex but yeah because you can't improve your <clears throat> save by more than one but you can still stack saves to start negating the rend but you'll learn that as you play that's one of those it's just yeah exactly let's just say someone's got all out defense on their unit and their unit has a save of a four now they've got a save of a three because they've plus one to their save and then the enemy's chucked minus two rend of them Basically, what you've done is you've gone down to a three with that all out defense, and then with that minus two rend, you've gone up to five. So now you're saving fives instead of sixes. Um, so, so that is basically what um, what that is. And then going back down to uh, so that was um, by box to board hobby. So hopefully, I'll answer your question there, mate. And then going back down to uh, Jack. Um, so uh, that was also the uh, the triumph question. What is the triumph? There was, there was also a triumph question as well. Yes, I'm trying to stay on top. So uh, what is a triumph? So essentially, when you are playing a 2,000-point game with your opponent, it can be sometimes quite hard to get to 2,000 points, or sometimes you might purposely not get to 2,000 points and be like 10 points under. So let's say your army total is 1,990 points and your opponent is 2,000. That means that you're like an underpowered army. So what that kind of means is you get something being rewarded for it, which is called a triumph to try and add some sort of balance. Now, triumphs used to have to roll for them, and now I believe you can just pick which triumph you want, yep. unless anyone mm -hmm. says anything different. Um, so what that means is there are three you can pick, I believe, and there are once per game ability that you can activate on one unit for a phase. Now, that or it might be an activation, and that could be things like, correct me if I'm wrong, but is there one that is... Uh, Plus one hit. to wound. Sorry, plus one to wound. Okay, yes. Yeah, Reroll so charge. Wrong. Yeah. And I can't remember the last one. Was it Battle Shock? Yeah, probably. Yeah. I only ever used the plus one to wound. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. you might have a lot of armies out there. Let's say they hit on freeze, but they might like wound on fours generally. Now you can make one unit, one game, uh, hit on freeze, 
wound or freeze or if you've got like a very sort of elite looking army and you might have i don't know some baron guard or some other elite unit that hits on twos and it wounds and freeze about one game you just one turn you just want it just to be twos and twos and you maybe you've got something to make them reroll ones just to make them a killer machine um you can pick that triumph and where triumphs used to be back in second edition i used to have to roll for it so what that meant is that you could go for a triumph it's like oh well I've got 10 points left over. Should I try and reshuffle the arm list or is it worth getting that triumph? And I did it and I would roll for to see what triumph I got. And I'd get one that meant I was immune to a battle shock for a unit. And I was playing Ostrich Brain Reapers who don't do battle shock anyway. So the 10 points was wasted. But now you can just pick for what you like. Um, anyone think anyone else want to add on to triumph? They generally can be quite good. Like the biggest yeah. thing, don't forget about them though, because that mm. is something that does happen. Uh, write it down in front of you. What's that? AOS reminders. Uh, yeah, AOS, I was AOS reminders. Or, 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 like buy physical tokens so you've, got, so you've got one in hand. That's what I do. So yeah. I remember I've got it. The, the, and you ask go. your opponent yeah. about their point total. <laughs> yeah, also, I remember like sometimes, like uh, obviously everyone being honest and all that sort of thing. It's like when you're playing against your opponent and there's always that sort of like that dangerous question of asking, like, how many points are you? Because you might have gone 10 points down. They might go like, I'm like they might go like I'm I'm 19 like 1985 points you go like they're like five points less than I am so they get the trunk. Um but yeah ask your opponent don't because I, I think I've had it where you like you get halfway through the first turn and obviously you know it's competitive you can't go back and go oh I've got to do this but halfway through the first turn and you've got to do triumph and you go oh that's annoying because I was 20 points down or something and it's like a really big thing I would say um, generally in casual games people will let you go back anyway so yeah exactly exactly they generally will um but yeah so that's that's pretty much it and like we've already mentioned aos reminders i mean honestly i think um i don't know if i paid for it now but if, if i don't i will be paying for it again which i think it's like one pound a month or something and it allows you to type in your whole army list but if you do it for free um i don't believe you can save it but if you do it and you, you pay like one pound, it. you can download it well, well yeah. there you go or if you want it on the cloud or whatever pay a pound a month and you can save all your army list there like it, it honestly it's such a good thing like there's like we've mentioned it's free so there's no reason to not do it um and if you forget anything in the game you go oh fuck, that could have changed my, you know that could have changed the outcome of the game blame yourself for not doing any <laughs> um essentially okay so um right and then going back to uh jack so um his first question be Actually, I'm going to read his changes all up now. I'm going to read his second question because that's more tied into less about personal taste. Um, and that is, who do you think are the biggest winners and losers of the new General's Handbook? And does it change enough to actually make a difference to most armies? I would say it does, firstly, on the difference to most armies. Does that mean that every army now is going to take completely different things? No. But that's because some armies just like, I imagine... I mean, without knowing these armies completely well, because I don't play them, but like Doors of Cain, I imagine they will still be taking lots of snakes, for example. I doubt they're going to be switching all the way back to Witch Elves now. They, they might oh, do. Witch I think you're wrong. Yeah. I think you 100% are wrong. I think uh, Witch Elves are definitely the way forward for uh, Doors of Cain right now. They're just really squishy, though, aren't they? Like, I, I can now see, like... But you can bring more now. Oh, they I got a rule update that allows you to bring an extra reinforced unit. So you can have like four blobs of twenty. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Well, well, there you go. So you know things will change. Oh, that sort of <laughs> and uh, and I think also what we've already mentioned that you know like there'll be some units that you didn't bat an eyelid in your army book. Now you might go, well, actually that might fit a good role. Even things like um, bringing pistoliers or something like that into your list. Um, this is Sigma as a screen for your Glacian veterans. Or, or, you know, just, just things like this, like just because they're big bases, screening is a lot more important now for your Glacian veterans, right. like, etc. cetera. Um, and yeah, so there are definitely um, changes uh, that will make you affect what you take in your armies. Um, and then who do you think are the biggest winners and losers of the Gemma's Hammock? Like, I just, you know, Sons of Behemoth is an easy mm -hmm. one to say that I imagine they're probably a, a bit of a loser. Oh. Um, I would say... Cowden Overlords as well, maybe. Oh, you do, you do bounty hunters. 
with with going back to Sons of Behemoth, a lot of the battle yeah. plans are objectives towards the center. You, know, you can just walk your giant straight forward and yeah. sit on those objectives. Yeah, okay. but, when, but with that one, can, uh, I'm not, I've not had one of the new uh, put a game in the new one yet. Uh, but can you use the command ability to stop them counting as as many on those? Yes, I would. I would guess so. Yeah. It's, oh, a spell. It's, a spell. it's a spell. I yeah. believe you should be able to use that. Let me just double check okay. on that. Yeah, because so, yeah. that'll, that'll knock it down to count. Is it count? The count was twenty to start with. You can get uh, 40 on one of them, I'm pretty sure. I think it's 30 yeah. to start with. Yeah. There's a way to get into it. It's their wounds characters, isn't it? I think. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> the Gaze of Gur is a spell that has a casting value of 7 and a range of 12 inches. If successfully yeah. cast, pick one enemy unit within range and visible to the caster. When determining the number of models in that enemy unit that are contesting objective, you, your opponent must halve that number uh, around you. Yeah, so he, like, that's, that, that'll, even that, if they can get onto a objective that's gonna that's gonna make him suffer a bit yeah yeah but this is something they should have yeah your wizard's still gonna get within 12. Ago. true well, it, it's not it's not that hard like the board's tiny yeah. what i would say about the giants though is that all. they did have a great first half of third edition didn't they oh yeah yeah like, they did. so uh, yeah, so I, I mean, I didn't really play those games, but from what I've heard of people, or from what I've seen when people comment on my why play Sons of Behemoth video, and some people have had a very sore bottom after playing a game <laughs> against the Giants. I, 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 I've never had many issues with them, but I had plenty. I just chuffed them up. <laughs> yeah, plenty. I'm really not can... sure I would say there's any particular losers, and I think this goes back to the fact that you're you're making a choice of whether you're going heavy Galatian veterans or heavy countering it and if you're not if it's any of the factions like if you're going over more tribes and wanting to lean into the beast claw raiders then you're going for the not Galatian veterans because you can't your um Morfang riders are on mount so they can't be Galatian veterans yeah. um which means you're throwing them in bounty hunters to get extra damage you're leaning into that counter uh, counter to the Galatian veterans so I'm not mm -hmm. sure I'd say any faction in particular is really lost out from it. They're just playing a different game. They're going for very different objectives now. Your, yes. your aim is now to shut down what they are doing rather than what you were doing, which was playing playing a game where people are trying to shut you down. I don't I, think that's the end. Yeah, I, I, I see where you're coming from there. I think there's, I mean, you go into like loads of nutritionists and you could say that. Because then the spells now are a lot better. You know, if, if you don't have a way to, to cast them into your army, um, it could be a bit harder. But then again, you've got Karen Overlords who traditionally don't really do many spells, shall we say. But then they've got the spell in the bottle. They could just unleash a purple sun if they would like to. Um, so, it, again, like it's not as straightforward cut as yeah. who are the biggest losers. And uh, when it's, I would say, like, you know, the Giants, they are clearly a, a loser. They got hit a bit by this. You know, if we have to pick them up. Yeah, um, um, who's the biggest like winner? Caradon Overlords. No, oh, sorry, sorry, really. the position. Like, they are yeah. very fucking <laughs> good, winner. but there are certain yeah. missions that are like just being really mean to them. Like, there is one that doesn't allow you to put things in reserve the whole game. Yeah, you can't. So they cannot use teleport fly around, can you? Yeah, you yeah. can't teleport, can you? Basically, yeah, so. Yeah, there are, but you know, there's much I feel sorry for people who are playing Cowden Overlords because I've seen a lot of armies go up for sale. <laughs> at the same time, like at the end of the day, I'll, I'll show the front cover of this book and it says, you know, season one. So, I mean, I don't want to pay for I don't want to pay another 30 pounds in, in six months, but there'll probably be two general's handbooks a year. I don't know if they said that anywhere or whatever, but going by the uh, way, on the book, kind of, yeah. I, I think it's happening. They, they said okay. at least they said at least six months, so hmm. it, could be, uh, it could be. It could be six. I think this is basically just a way for. I think I remember when I played a lot of TTS during lockdown, and then me and quite a few people were, were very upset that there was a lack of a winter FAQ one. So now I think they decided right instead of a winter FAQ, you can have a bloody new book. Um, so I can't really complain too much. But <laughs> yeah, I, I think like, we can say that they're probably two. Without playing loads of games and everything, they're two losers, um, I'd say, for this. And, you know, losers or just have to work harder to adapt, essentially. Yeah. And then winners. Who do we think are 
some good winners in this new edition. I know like Nighthaunt, for example, I'm not saying they're the best army out there, but they're certainly, it comes into a lot with their new book, but because they've got mm -hmm. so many options for Glacian veterans in mm -hmm. their army, yeah. and they've got good contenders Nurgle. for bounty hunters as yeah, well. Yeah, like being able Nurgle. to field 10 Black Kings. Nurgle. Yeah, because you can field 10 Black Kings and you can attack in two ranks. Anything that's had got like the bigger bases and previously only a one inch range, they're, they're massive now. So Beast of Chaos, Nurgle, uh, again, Nighthorn, because the Revenants, the guys' Revenants, they're on 32s and they've only got an inch yep. range. And now when you put, have them in battle line, yeah, they can they can attack in two ranks. So yep. anything that's only had a one inch range and had a 32 millimeter plus base, they're the winners. Yeah, It's kind of like, you know the meme of like the guy like you know just realizing something a light bulb moment his head's exploding off like all these new ideas i kind of feel a little bit like that with the simple rulings like we've mentioned probably about five times now you just mentioned as a whole as long as you're half an inch within someone on the first rank basically who's within range of the enemy to hit them with their stick you can now attack as well and that's just mac there's so many units just going like what's <laughs> what size bases are they on it's a 25 no it's 30, it's 32 movements oh. or 28 oh. yeah yeah like and also i think it makes the game so much quicker because there was also mm -hmm. um a lot of constant, shuffling yeah loads of shuffling going like is it in i mean at the end of the day your opponent knows if you're going to spend five minutes piling a unit you're going to get all the ones you want in but you still have to go through for the sake of who's closer to an objective and all these sorts of things actually yeah. physically moving the model and um, I think also a change that I wasn't a fan of in third edition with the whole coherency rule, but you have to be in range yeah. of two models. I, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to, you know, like whine about it. Stuff. I, I still don't like it just because I think it limits you. Some things just don't look cool. Now you have cavalry who are sometimes now charging sideways and stuff. I, I didn't like the look of it, but I think that this is a nice rule. To help fix that, is I, it just Glacian veterans though that only benefit from it, or no, everyone? No. Okay, it, that's cool. cool. I thought it was Glacian uh, veterans. Is it, is uh, it just Glacian veterans? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 But but there's a, there's a, but a lot a lot a lot of things have uh what way, ways to get other other things on as, as battle line anyway, and as Glacian veterans. So yeah, yeah. yeah that there's and also that is talking about army list building. That's an interesting thing because um usually beforehand unless there was a very obscure rule that made you not want to if it was like uh right okay so i'm going to take these units in my army oh what if i put no effort at all but i just tick this box or whatever i can now make these units battle line well i might as well do that yeah. now you do not want to necessarily make everything battle line because then you could turn into a glacian veteran and then that means they could take a lot more damage okay. so it's, yeah. it's 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 that view isn't it it's that swing sort of relationship in that terms of going like well if i'm making galatian veterans i can now make put, put in that you know uh, battalion and they get more points on objectives or they help get battle tactics easier but now the enemy might be doing loads of damage to you and like because i've played uh like i'm saying like two half games of tts with yourself luke and yeah. of the new edition so like <laughs> i still don't have nearly enough experience with the new edition to go oh well, everyone's going to catalyze in the whole taking loads of bounty hunters to get rid of the Glacian veterans because no. you could go three months down the line and it turns out bounty hunters are so good that maybe people are limiting the Glacian veterans or maybe bounty hunters aren't effective enough because everyone's think... shooting them off the board or whatever that people are taking more Glacian veterans. So I think from what um... I've heard so far, bounty hunters are the people are looking more towards what's a good bounty hunter than yeah. Glacian veteran. Yeah. So in our games that we've played, um, I've been running, I've been playing with Skaven and I've been running a block of 60 clan rats and two blocks of 20 yeah two blocks mm -hmm. of 20 storm vermin and i've had them in the expert conquerors because i'm like well a block of 60 clan rats that's 180 um models on an objective i'm now questioning it and i'm thinking i'm actually wanting to turn them into bounty hunters because the storm vermin with that extra damage is going to be a lot more helpful um and clan rats like whilst yeah sure you know they're they're what fires and fires to hit but there'd be two damage so the ones that do get through count for more yeah. i think yeah. as well were, were you ever losing contesting objectives with clan rats do they need well this is yeah this is the thing if i've got 60 do i need to yeah. but going up against another galatian veteran unit where they, the expert conquerors. Yeah. Where they are expert conquerors then okay. i would be yeah. 
but if I'm bounty hunter, then I'm getting an extra damage against them. Mm -hmm. So yes, you're I'm now starting to think then you have to kill like, less. I'm starting to think I might actually switch it over and I'm going to run even these large blocks as bounty hunters rather than as expert conquerors. Yeah. yeah. It, it's that. Uh, it's. I think it's that lovely idea of this build in the moment, like we've been saying, where nobody really knows a straightforward answer to, like, you read this book, you go, okay, this is exactly how everything's going to work. Like, do, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. without getting these games in, without finding out just exactly how I think it works, I think. You know, like as you were saying, Max earlier, I think it's a they've written a good book here, to be honest. And it feels like it's not just, oh, it's that time of the year again. Here's a new book with some new scenarios. Give us the money. <laughs> like, I it's feel not like, like they... just play God's Trek. Yeah, because exactly. he doesn't die and kills everything. I mean, we may see him if he can fit into. Oh yeah, uh, I played him last time, and he's still as dumb as I remember. Oh yes. I I've only ever played against the one. points into the guy. Still fucking lit. <laughs> yeah. I think like I only played against him once, and I was playing a fast army, so I could just run away from him. But if you can't really? do that, then you're. I think yeah. if you can hold him, you can't even yeah. like, prince or shackles or yeah. Yeah. Or, or anything to cut his movement and charging. It's I, think, I think there was a period of third edition right? where every order army was just shoving in Gotrek to have Gotrek. Yeah, yeah, so how, how many yep. points was Gotrek back then? Was it about 500 points, was he, roughly? Yeah, so, uh, 400 and something. Yeah, so, so, it dropped, yeah. so every order of player was basically playing a 1500 and something point game. <laughs> <laughs> They're yeah. like, and a Gotrek. Like, you would turn up, I don't know, you both have a Gotrek, and you'd both take them off the board, because, and then you both play 1500, or something, something like that. Um, <laughs> I don't think you just take now? him off the board. <laughs> no, 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 but you know, like, it just counts <laughs> yeah. each other. Yeah, because um, Gotrek's 485 points right now. Um, oh, is he? Yeah, he's a chunky boy. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a good boy, though, to be fair. Um, yeah. And then we've got uh, Dark in the uh, chat just saying, hello, guys. Hello, mate. Hope you're doing well. Thank you very much for joining hey, us. Um, we're probably coming towards the end of the video now, but you can always uh, re-watch the video and all those sorts of things. And anyone who's watching now, got any questions, put them in the chat while we're here or uh, comment them away, of course, and I'll be trying to help you as much as I can. Okay, so then going on to the more sort of like personal question, which uh, Jack asked was, um, what are the three factions you would never play and why? So I think I'll, I'll start on myself. I think dissing on three factions is quite it's quite high, but I'll, uh, I'll try. So the first one is Nurgle. Now, again, this is all about personal taste. This isn't about, you know, oh, it's, it's bad. Work. I personally just, I'm not a fan of the aesthetic uh, myself, which is strange because I, I love painting dead flesh and all that sort of thing on um, death, obviously, but Nurgle, just just not a fan. Um, and it's quite a tanky sort of play style, which I think I want to be doing lots of damage. Uh, I don't know if that's changed anything. But anyway, that's, that's, that's my sort of views. On that, uh, two other armies. I wouldn't want to play Ironith Deepkin just because um, I had, I used to have a good um, reputation of like containing my eel virginity until I played against those quite a few times. And just the eel was just, just horrible, 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 horrible. Hate them. And what's an other army I wouldn't play would be maybe. Daughters of Cain, just because I've been hurt badly by them as well. Um, I would say Stormcast, but that's a lie. Um, I don't know. I think about my third one. What would other people not want to play? Uh, probably for me, Lumineth. I just don't like them. I, that it's the hats that look stupid. I don't really like the play style. It's just not not my bag. Mm -hmm. uh, been on receiving end of like Teclas a few times, and it was miserable. Yeah, I imagine. Which is not it's not great. Uh I don't think it was next. So Seraphon. It's it's another army that I, I did I had, did play in fantasy and got rid of them. But it's, it's it's old models that haven't aged well, whereas whereas with beasts they've they've aged quite nicely. Whereas yep. the Seraphon haven't. And especially with the the Saurus Knights, because the the cold ones just look a bit uh yeah, so much better. <laughs> um, 
probably sons of Baymac because I just find them really boring. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, it's it's not the kind of playstyle I go for anyway. It tends to be like fast and light. You, but then I don't I don't even mind Nurgle. It's just sons of Baymac don't appeal at all. No, I get you. I understand that. Yeah. Um, I mean, I like paint, I love to paint a mega because they look fun to paint. But playing 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 them as a faction on their own, it's just not probably not for me. It's a lot of flesh, isn't it? A lot of flesh to paint. I've got a lot. Oh, I, I paint a lot. I, I play Slash and Beasts. Like ninety percent yeah. of my armies, of my armies are flesh, and I've got fire yeah. slayers as well. It's just flesh. Mm. It's like painting like half naked things. Exactly. I I, yeah. I understand that. Um, right, what would you say, Luke? Fire Slayers would be my first one. I don't think I'd do. <laughs> um, and I think it's back to the root. And I, I, I will caveat this. Any I say right now, are uh, these are armies I wouldn't play right now. That's not to say if they did something different, brought out in, interesting things, I couldn't be interested in possibly picking them up one day. But yeah, with Fire Slayers right now, is back to the root of the problem. They all look too similar. Like, I, I, they just don't draw me in as a faction with the models, and that's a big part of it for me. Is I want to enjoy the building, the playing, mm. um, and the painting, and I'm just not going to enjoy it with them. Um, probably right now, um, Gits, and that's just because I'm currently doing Skaven, and I really don't want to do another mass board. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I look at all the stabbers and I'm like, no, nah, I'm good right trolls. now. <laughs> trolls are an option. Trolls are an yeah, option. Yeah, trolls are an option. Uh, trolls are one of those where I'd want to work on my ability to paint skin because I'd want to do it well. Um, right, and right now I don't think I could do them justice. And I think my final one, bit back to sort of you, Ben and uh, Nagash, and like when you've played against something and you. <laughs> Hated it so much you'd never want to put it. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to pin this one completely on Max, and I would never do Zinch. Um, <laughs> Max <laughs> means your job has been successful. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Yeah. The good thing is they saw it and they drove a stake right through my heart. <laughs> oh, okay. In the back, in the front, in the side, from below. <laughs> oh, only way to kill it. And yeah. uh, what about yourself, Max, then? Uh, first off, Luminev. Fuck those guys. I just, <laughs> so just hate else, to be very honest. But mm. at least the fish people look look cool on their eels. Yeah. Uh, the only cool thing about Luminev are are the big cows. To be Come honest, on, yeah. Come on. fantastic. They they're great, and I I really like the foxes in terms of design. <laughs> but if you ever played against one, you just walk away from it. Played them one. Last time I played them, there was three of them. <laughs> yeah, was two of the other wind spirits. I'm like, great, this is. I'm fun. pretty sure I also played three against Big Art. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, it, was, oh, it was just like, here, you're free, and okay. they just move away. <laughs> not do anything. Uh, the second one would be carried on overlords. Like, they don't feel like a. They just don't feel like an Age of Sigma army. Like, I look at them and I'm like, this can be 40k squads. Doesn't help they are now. They're not now going to release 40k squads. So I'm pretty <laughs> sure I can, yeah. I can bring them and be like, huh, the models look. E- even look better than the 40k squads because they look weird as fuck. Uh, and yeah, and then just the general teleporting, like, oh no, I just teleport away, then I can just shoot for free, still, for whatever reason. <laughs> yeah. And the third one? Yeah. Free's quite a lot, isn't it? It's hard yeah, to... Free is hard. Yeah. Because... Yeah, I'm generally not the biggest fan of just walk forward and charge. Even though that's all I do with Archeon, <laughs> to be very honest. But at Probably least he's, like, technical. He, he's, he's a lot more techni- technical because he's 40% of your army and doesn't do 1 billion things. Yeah. So I have to say the third one has to be some Sons of Behemoth because it's basically you play four Archeons 
and you count for 30. Yeah. Or 20. I don't know. And be like, yeah, I cannot do anything about that. So <laughs> if I want to charge it and not kill it, it kills everything on my side, and I still don't have the objective because he has one wound and counts as 20. Well, I here lost 30 dudes of the 40 and still low, still lose. So in that way, I do like the fact we have the count is three more, more options for that because that does help the stupidness of, of those guys. Like, and they're all like, there's, there's no finesse. There's just, you walk forward. That's all you do. You just walk, you walk forward, turn one, you try a charge. If you make it, great. Otherwise, turn two, you just fight and hope you don't die. That's all they ever fucking do and all they have to do. And <laughs> That's cool. As an cool. opponent, I was always like, all right, so I can never take an objective because getting 21 models on an objective is pretty impossible with their base size. So you're like, okay, because otherwise they just walk into you. Mm -hmm. And they get bonuses for everything for no reason. Like, oh, you, you're a hero. I get plus one to hit. Oh, you have more than 10 models. I get plus one to wound. Yeah. Hit to hit. <laughs> you just keep stacking it and like, yeah, well, the only thing I can do is just Kill them faster than they kill me. Yeah. And when they've got that many wounds, it can be a bit tricky. Yeah. And then it just becomes a gamble. Like, I lost a full tournament just on not killing one one get one giant with my whole fucking army. Sounds like you've had some great experiences against them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I saw them pretty much every fucking tournament. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. Was that your third one? Was that your third army? Yeah, yeah. I keep it. So you're going from hay and destruction in terms of the giants. What about you, Matt? <laughs> well, I don't want to seem like a copycat here because I, I did actually think ahead and wrote these down, but I've also put Luminef, Carajan, and Gargans. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, Luminef, because they're elves, and at least the other elves have a decent aesthetic. And I, I would say mm. that. As much as I hate elves, I had never probably one of my favorite designed armies, but in terms of the models, I really like the totals. Yes. Yeah. So I, I would play Idenf, but maybe shove some orcs rather than elves on there. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll get you. The orcs. <laughs> I, I have actually, um, I was building like a jungle themed destruction army, and I did stick some bone splitter orcs on eels on the ground to be riding snakes instead of boar boys. That's cool. Yeah. Oh my oh, god! Like that, yeah. No, you've got to you've got to do C uh, do ID, IDK army, but using orcs on top and call them the Auckland Raiders. <laughs> Auckland Raiders. <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> Carajan and Gargant. Carajan and Gargant. So I'd both probably enjoy painting, but it's just the play style I wouldn't enjoy. And as much as I love destruction, you know, I I would maybe get a Gargant and add it to a destruction army, but I wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't want to just have four guys. Um, and they're also expensive lads, so I don't see myself actually getting any for a while. Yes, I, 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 it is hard. I think, and also I'd like to just say, like, for example, on my, like the three armies I would never play is like a, how much I would never play them. Like, I think the third one I picked is Dawes of Cain. I'm pretty sure a month ago I saw like um, £200 worth of Dawes of Cain for £80 and I tried to buy them. So that's, that's how much I care about sticking to I'd never play. Um, but I think, like, if you had to, without getting too much of the discussion, there would be other armies I would pick um, to be armies I wouldn't play. But in terms of never, not true, because what Luke was saying, there's some armies I would absolutely not play now because I'm not really a biggest fan of the models. Like, Seraphon was one, not the big dinosaurs, but like Saurus Knights, etc., and Sauruses. But if that army got uh, like a, a range update, like a Gloom Spike Hits did or something, oh, it'd be lovely. Right. Drop a heartbeat. And I think that shows, like, the games in a pretty good. It shows how much you like the aesthetic of a game if you find it 
relatively hard to come up with three armies you would never play, or if someone said pick five armies, because I believe Age Sigma has got like 20 armies in it, or it's got like 20 allegiances or oh, something. Oh, it's, it's, got, it's got loads of them. It's got, I think it's going to be one 20 in it. But like one of the other armies that I did want to kind of pick was Cities of Sigma. And it's not because I don't like them. It's not because I don't like the miniatures or anything like that. I, just, I love the miniatures. It's just that Dawn Bringing Crusades is going to be it's going to change it massively, and we don't know where it where it, where it's going to land. Oh yeah, mm. like that, I've stopped yeah. any purchases for my cities. Yeah. Like, I, I'm not doing anything with it. Like there's no point in me it's, doing anything. Like it's too much of a risk. It is far too much of a risk for me to try it. I had two further cities lists that I wanted to build and buy, yeah. and I've, like I've stopped. There's no point in me doing it. I had, a full, I had a full Tempest I one that was based around Go Trek. Um, <laughs> all dwarves and i went tempest size so i could include some of the ca uh, character of overlords um, yeah. and yeah i'm sat there like well i'm not going to do that because i'll build it and got two games out of it and then i won't be able to use half of it it's just i don't know where they're going with them so i'm pausing everything <laughs> yeah you're just gonna be a bit safe yeah um so I just see like Dark Sir said a couple more things in the chat. So he says, I can't wait for the new battle tomes for Loom of Realm Lords and such as each. Uh what about tome update uh you guys looking forward to Slaves. Slaves, yeah. I the think chaos. I want a basic chaos one. I I want my glimpse fight back in the game. <laughs> I'm yes. look, I'm hesitant to look forward spot. to Dawnbringer Crusades. Hesitant. Yeah. Well, especially if they, if, they, if they keep the aesthetic that they've got with the new Underworlds Warband, it, mm. it looks really good. Oh yeah, yeah. Looks super. The, the witch hunter thing, which it just looks really good. I want a witch hunter army. I, oh, think the, I want the yeah. leading fanatics. Like it's go. Oh, as long yeah. as they don't don't make them all human, I guess. As long as they don't forget about the dwarves and the yeah. elves. I do yeah. want to. Do want them? Oh, they've already shown a dwarf model. Have they? Oh, yes. Yeah. There is a dwarf model they've shown. Okay. Um, yeah, there's, there's, there's the dwarf model and elf model in Curse City as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For as well, so I don't think they'll forget about them entirely. Yeah, hopefully not. Um, yeah. Be good, and, and, and hopefully they allow you to transfer your cities of sigma models into them quite well, and not just hmm. say they're going to do a range update. And then um, I remember one time they said they're going to remove a handful of models, and I think they act like over a hundred units or something <laughs> once upon a time. Um, just um, but you know, I'm sure Games Workshop won't do that. Of course, hey, but um, hey, hey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I think, um, I think for me, I recently, I think the other day, I bought the Nighthorn Battle Tome. Uh, someone who's had Nighthorn for quite a long time, and I don't think they had a Battle Tome for quite a while like three years or something. It was nice to see them a long awaited army get an update. I think for me, I would like to say Gleams by Kids as well because I bought some of those, um, and it, it's just the What's it called? The keyword bingo or something, isn't it? Of yeah. what yeah. things can match and everything else. Um, I'd, uh, slaves will be cool. Um, I'd quite like to see Flesh Eater Courts. Um, get they need some more well. models. Yeah, 100%. Well, they don't need new models. They don't need they, updated models. They need new models. Yeah, they need yeah. to. The, so the whole thing we were saying earlier that you can buy the whole army in Star Collecting Box, where that's like, cool, oh, you can fit it all in there. But at the same time, it'd be nice to have some new ones. And also, they need to make courtier models because I've got so many flesh eater courts where it's not a problem. I've got loads, I've bought loads of Crypt Horrors, loads of Crypt Flares, so I can make the hero version of those units. But if you're trying to get into the army, it's a pain because let's say, I don't know, you want nine Crypt Flares. Right, so that's three boxes, and then you're going to have to buy a fourth one to get one Crypt Flare. And yes, you can try and go on eBay, etc., to try and get one model, but it's not the easiest thing to do. And they, um, they, they work out like similar price to almost a full box by, by, the, by the time you've done it all with postage. Yeah, yeah. Because that's why that's I've noticed with buying like the way, When I was going to get into Fleshy to Courts, the way I was going to do it was I was going to buy a single box of those just to make myself both of the hero ones. Yeah, just have yeah. One a spare extra. one. I think the other thing as well is that if you can see like a model from an other range, like I, I can't remember some, but I remember there was like, uh, like some sort of like if you're looking for the the crypt horror hero variant, uh, look at other model ranges and see what you think looks like a crypt horror. Und Make Underworlds that. is very good for swapping out heroes. Very true. Yeah, that is very good. Yeah. Um, I've certainly done that with the ghouls from there. Um, but but yeah, that I think I'd like to see Beast of Chaos get an update. Um, 
OBR as well. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 OBR like, needs to... like the OBR Archer from the Underworlds Warband. Having yeah. like an Archer unit, it'd, it'd be really cool for OBR. To be honest, I do not want an update for Beast of Chaos, to be very honest. <laughs> yeah. I play it and they're perfect. I, um, I'm, I'm super happy with where, where they are now. I'm really happy with them. I just like, like I, just, I, I, I would, just, I would yeah. really like a plastic Shagoth and a plastic Beast Lord. Yeah, mm. I'd rather have new we need, units than new books. We need some new, yeah. we, need some, we, need some new yeah. we need some new bits rather than like the, the, the rules as a stand at the moment. They're really good, and I've been since the White Dwarf update, they've been really enjoyable to play. Yeah. What, yeah. You, what you need is them to just bring all the all the rules that are out right now just into one book. Yeah, yeah. Like exactly that. that. Don't less it. Anything else? Yeah, because at the moment it. Yeah, because at the moment mm. it's uh, Broken Realms, Kragnos, a White Dwarf plus the book. Fantastic. I think yeah. also for me, yeah, that and, uh, incarnate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think I as cool. someone That's who's dark. yeah, as someone who's been away for a year and I came back, I was wrong about one thing I predicted because I thought second edition was be getting every army be getting a battle tome, and then I thought in third edition there'll be less battle tomes coming out, but every army when it does, it'll be getting like a couple of units being updated or something, and oh. uh, and I was wrong about that. So hopefully, uh, it's not, it's not had a, a record going, but yeah. like Skaven got kind of shattered. Yeah, you think Skate like it's just the same old formula where it's like, oh, Skaven is like a so and any new units coming out, you know, because some things look right, but some things definitely don't. Um, no, but there is a new Skaven assassin, right? Okay, which didn't need it. No, yeah. like the, the old one was all right. Like if I was to think of their old models, he got away with still being okay. Um, like things like gutter runners or not gutter oh, runners. Yeah, awful. Yeah. Nice well, well, acolytes. Nice yeah. Twelve it. pounds for one metal model. You need five minimum. Mm. It's sixty yeah. pounds for a minimum size unit. I remember when they were really good in the meta as well, like a, a year and a half. They ago are now. Something. Very like good now. Yeah, it's funny that. They're really, really good, but no one could afford to run them. What is it people do? Like, you need the gas masks, don't you? But you, you take gas turn... masks off the Plague Core catapult. You but there's not nearly enough. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Make little green. Well, there's a really good balls. third party site that's doing upgrade sprues for them right now. Yeah, but, but... you can also get like, gas masks and stuff from. Oh, we lost my gosh. Well, really finally taking over. Right, yeah. finally. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right then, well, welcome so, to the so, new Age of Nagash channel. Um, <laughs> is it new better, more punctual? Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, no, it's uh, the Age of Nagash again. I wasn't even yeah. touching anything. I thought the whole um, <laughs> the whole stream stopped. Yeah. I was like, oh, no, don't yeah. do this. Cool, then. I've got, I've got a good one for you guys. So, an army that you don't do already, what would? but you had to choose one, what would you go for next? <sighs> that you don't have already? Whoa. But they already play yeah, all the yeah. 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 let, let me get my lists up. And let me my, my, my personal one would be what my uh, uh, list that I've named Blue Steel, which is uh, bone, bone Splitters. Mm -hmm. And it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's six more good profits just staring oh. things to death. So um, I'm, I've played a few games as a, a list I like to call Cult of the Cabbage. Which is right. more crusher and four Wurgog profits. Excellent. <laughs> and right, then yeah. just, just screens. <laughs> and yeah, that one was, I played that against the new Daughters of Cain, and it was a very fun game. Beautiful. So, so I, played it. It, I played it on TTS once, and I stared two Mega Gargans to death in one turn. Yep. And it, was, it was beautiful. Mm -hmm. I've... And I, I only lost two profits. The, the, <laughs> best, the best stare I've done is I killed. I can't remember if it was two Storm Drake Guard, but they were being. Oh no, it was a Knight Draconis or something, but he was also bodyguarding to another unit. So I killed the unit they were bodyguarding to, and then also the Knight Draconis. Nice. <laughs> also the Knight Draconis. I think I'd either go for. I'd actually go back to Flesh Eater Courts because I sold all of mine. Um, so I think I'd possibly go back to that and do like the one list I want to do. Yeah. Or I'd possibly go for a Blades of Corn Army. Okay. Uh, I, I've I've always been intrigued by them. I, I really like the models. Um, yeah, it's very different to any play style that I do. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'd I'd be interested to give them a go sometime. Mm. Uh, 
Does the squigs count? Because I I play Trogoffs in Gloomsight Gits, but I don't play squigs yet. So yeah, why not? That's yeah, different army. Yeah, <laughs> that counts. That's fine. <laughs> That'd be like me saying, "Don't worry, I already play Living City for Cities of Armor." Uh, yeah. But look how many other cities I yeah, yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't, I've only got six dragon ogres. You know, I don't have mm -hmm. forty-two like I have with the mine saws. No, I haven't even. Four. I haven't yeah. even got zombies for my soul blight. So yeah, that's, that's another, another one. Yeah. Um, I don't. Know, I think uh, zombies. Like I said, I'd love to play, but I'd like there to for there to be a, a model update first. I mm. think. Well, um, been zombies have been updated, haven't they? One. Yeah. What zombies. Oh, zombies. Oh, yeah, but I'm not buying zombies because I have over 100 skeletons. Um, <laughs> skeleton man all the way. But I, I completely agree that they are they are probably better. Um, but I'd, I'd be quite tempted by beasts, to be honest. Um, so I, I really like Bester Gores and Bull Gores and all the Bester monsters Gore. in between. Yeah, yeah like, like a massive blocks of Bester Gores would be quite good. I think my Beast of Chaos review when I did that a while ago, I think it was when I was looking at the positives and negatives of each unit. I think one of the negatives I had all the time for the Zangor units, because I was very much a fan of Zangor should be in Zeech and not a piece of chaos was yeah. not as cool as the best of course, which um, so, cool. yeah. uh, someone commented on it again, but statistically the Zangors are better. I was like, we're not talking about statistics. We're talking about yeah. a personal point of view. We're all okay. Uh, no, 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 <laughs> giving each other a run for their money. Yeah, that, it's cool that. Um, I think, yeah, so like piece of chaos or um i'd say like scaven of seraphon but again i'd i'd like new updated models and the reason why i say new updated models is because i've had each of those things at some point in the past and the past could be a, one of the past was i don't know um 16 years ago and the models haven't changed since that point so i don't want to have got back into them without them yeah, most of the scaven models are probably older than that yeah. Yep. Yeah. Probably. So 2002. Quite yeah. older than me. I've got, yeah. I've got mining swords from '94. So. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I've got not mining swords older than me. Um, yeah. Yeah. I get you. But um, and then I was just going to say that what Dark was saying is we're talking because we were all saying bad things about Lumina, but he was saying the only thing I don't like <laughs> about them is to try and move twenty Veneri. Alarian, however that's pronounced. Uh, Wardens is a pain, which, mm -hmm. yeah, those massive spears. Out of interest, yeah. they just break all the time, presumably. I'm, I'm assuming so. But I've never, but the thing is, I've never seen them break. Yeah. When I, when I played against Lumineth, like, they've all been, like, pristine and perfect. So yeah, I mean, just... Are you implying that the owners uh, are, are also much like the elves? That's how they. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. What, what, what I'd say is that, like, what, I, what I'd have done with them personally is what I've done with a lot of my older spears. From my own gods, is cut the spears off and replace it with metal. Mm. Yeah, and just drill, drill through the hand, put the metal, put the old spear head back on it, and then it works. And I well, had an even bigger idea: just make them moles. <laughs> yeah, How about, yeah, or make them um, just get those magnet boxes, couldn't you? Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's a way to do it. Still. Um, <laughs> yeah, I can like for example, with me potentially going to um, play quite a few games with Nighthorn, hopefully in the future. I would definitely be magnetizing them all. Um, but yeah, so he says that, and then he went. Um, talking about something that we mentioned as well is I can't stand the Krongspire incarnate. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I see it too much. I've never seen one as I have I've been playing the games. But... One, and I've played it once. I, 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 it's quite fun to play. Mm -hmm. it, especially I, if, it, especially if, you feed it, if you can feed it endless spells and get, your, and get one of your guys to just die, it's really good fun. So it's not an endless spell itself, is it? It's an incarnate. No, no, so it's no, but it can't eat endless spells, especially if it, when it goes wild, it can eat your own. Right. Can it, yeah, does it, it attack the enemy as well? Yeah, yeah, it attacks the enemy as well. It's yeah. basically a combination of a monster and an endless spell. Yeah. It's oh. really fucking weird, but the it's, it's fun. problem is you cannot, you basically my cannot big, kill it. My big thing with it is it itself, I can take or leave, it is a concept and where they can potentially go with it for all the other realms, I think it's, it's really cool. Yeah, and I'm yeah, really I think, I think, excited to see where it develops. Yeah, like like a realm of life one or a realm of death one would look really good. Mm. You realm can see like, death. yeah, that'd be cool. You can see them all being lined up on the shelf, couldn't you? And I'd yeah, really, yeah. 
I don't yeah. think they would do this Games Workshop, but I could, like, for some reason, I could see them all just going, like, it's basically the same thing, it's painted a bit differently. <laughs> like, uh, I hope not. I hope not. That'd I be like really a... hope not. That yeah. would be mm. the biggest letdown. Uh, I'd love a little White Dwarf get, uh, count, uh, game where they, like they used to do, where you get the rules. Uh, if you own all the different incarnates, you can play a game where you pitch them all against themselves. Like, that would be so much fun. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Battle of the Realms with the incarnates and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah that, that would be good. I think. I'm, I'm... Do you think we'll see one for each realm by the end of third edition? Because no, not by the end. No, no. No. No, no. No. Going forward, as the as it develops, you know, by twenty thirty, I don't think we're going to see another. Every new realm, we get one. Yeah, yeah, every time we go to a new realm, we may get one. Yeah. I don't think we're going to see another realm until fourth edition. No, I think, we'll probably, I think we'll probably see one at the end of third. I do think we'll move out of beasts. Well, I think yeah. the end of third has got it's got to finish with Slanesh getting loose. That's the. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah they've got to do it rather than just keep teasing yeah. it. Yeah, I think we're going to go to Olga. I think we're going to go to Realm of Shadows next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So then, then we get like the like the, the, the long awaited Shadow Elves. Yeah, I'll tell you the what, that could be an army. I could really maybe, easily jump maybe some on. Chaos Dwarfs. I don't know. Just throw that out there. Oh, yeah. You never know. You know, you do never know with games worship, do you? Because, like, you know, the whole um, war band that's coming out for Slaves of Darkness that everyone's like, oh, that, yeah, really that, could be, that could be Chaos Dwarves. And then it's like, oh, no, because they're like worshippers of the my, of God. Uh, yes, yeah. exactly. Um, my, my friend's but, still playing, praying for, for Dark Oath to finally come out as a full faction. Yeah, I don't think yeah. that's happening. Oh, <laughs> well, 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 the well, update Marauder Bottles, Kernoff. maybe we can talk about yeah. that. Yeah. The Kernoff things from Underworld. Yeah. Yeah. If those came out, that would be superb. They're, they're, Honestly, they're... I mm. thought we were going to get the ant people. The yeah, all oh, right. Yeah, yeah. I I honestly thought we were going to get those. I, I, I was kind of hoping for Famir. Mm -hmm. Of course. Well, I are. I still know some people who are uh, holding out for Tomb Kings coming back, and it's like, <laughs> like maybe the old world, but like Oscar Bone Reapers, they are. The, there's no way. Yeah, they, they are, there's no way there's space for the. The Nagash Tomb Kings, and then the ones that don't like Nagash. Yeah. yeah. Other than a, other than a paint scheme, there's enough. There's not enough space. To no. Yeah. It. No. It's, it's it's a shame. Another, another, death another, death another, yeah. another death faction would be nice. Another death I'm, faction and another destruction faction. I would. Yeah. Nice. I would like the like an insectoid destruction faction, like yeah. just just Sigma Tyranid sort of thing. Yeah. 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 That'd be really just, cool. I think. I, I love that sort of, you know, the, the sort of hive bug sort of mm -hmm. mentality. Like, as you know, in 40k, there's a hell of a lot of scary things out there, but Tyranids are definitely going to be. If if you can, like, for me, I I'm up in an R and going, what's more terrifying, the idea of the warp or Tyranids? And if Tyranids can be up there as a contender for that conversation, then Tyranids are absolutely horrendously horrific. Yeah. Um, but there's, well, I think 40k is always, what's to say? And is it 10 minutes to midnight or something? You know, when everything yeah. is. You know, on the brink of being the universe of being, you know, the galaxy being yeah. destroyed. Whereas Age of Sigma hasn't really got that tension. Mm. Um, I think oh. e even when they're like, but it's the same in 40k, I suppose, where even, you know, when it's like 10 minutes to midnight and Age of Sigma's like, oh, you know, this thing could unleash this massive thing that could destroy it. It's never going to happen. You know, like, so it's kind of the, the disbelief makes you take the tension. I, out I, don't, I don't know. They might do. I've got five books behind me that ended the. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, but now they're actually yeah. making money. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I think they do quite. I mean, like I, said, I haven't really been following the story for the last year, but they do make significant changes in the story of Age yeah. of Sigma. I'd say compared to forty. Bro Broken Realms was great. Yeah, the Broken, Broken, yeah. Realms. Like, Broken Realms was superb stories, and like the models that released alongside Broken Realms were just great. Yeah, like, Bellicor, I think, is one of the best the, models for a long time. Oh, Bellicor is beautiful, but so were the uh, twins as well for some mm -hmm. there. Yeah, like, thin and decks are just beautiful models. Croak, like, Croak was nice. Yeah, Croak, Croak was nice. Croak, 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 Croak. was great. Kragnos was looked absolutely superb. Kragnos got a lot of people. Yeah, 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 yeah they were cool. Yeah, yeah, and then the new leaked lieutenants for Belcor is also very sick. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. He looks, he looks great. Yeah, I'm a big fan of that Slave Dance release. There's going to be a lot of um, lot of models, and also, you know, you're going to get the standard bearers and all those sorts of things if you haven't already made it for your Chaos yeah. Warriors and all. 
be nice. Chaos Chosen, I believe. I was a little bit annoyed to see that Chaos Legionnaires are just a war band because I think that's a really cool concept um, that they could have made. But I suppose that is just Chaos Warriors. Yeah. Note, I think I have to buy a few boxes of Chaos Warriors before they go out because you now still get sixteen <laughs> for like thirty bucks. Yeah, they'll be they'll be more expensive for sure. And then, <laughs> at that point, they will be ten for forty. Hmm. I guess, yeah, I think there's. And already have um, like 30 of the new ones, so why not buy more? Um, yeah, but yeah, and then um, we got Sam as well, just saying uh, hi everyone. So, hope you're doing well, Sam. Um, right, I think that is pretty much it. Come up to yeah. two hours, which I'll be honest, this is quicker than I thought this video would be. Um, so is there anything else anyone wants to add on the concept on? how to get back into Age Sigma after you have me playing it for about a year. Have yeah. fun. Have yeah. fun. Yeah. Enjoy yeah. it. Just play what you want. Pay them. Yeah. Put, Pay them. Yeah, put yeah. brushes down on models. Have There's new contrast coming out as well, so even easier to pay yeah. more options. Right, just I tried. Have, what did have I do? fun with every part of the hobby. I would say join join if you've not got many people around you, join a Discord server, and ask questions, show yeah, off your models. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Plug the Discord. Yeah, that's what yeah, yeah. yeah, plug the yeah. Discord. So despite me not actually making any videos for I explained this in the video yesterday, but like for three and a half months, which is definitely the longest since I started YouTube because very busy, got working like six days a week, etc. As if you were watching this video from the start, I was late. Uh, but no one else, no one else was late, it was just me. Um, yeah, because I finished yeah. work very late. But um, despite me being away, the Discord has still been very lively and it's been nice to pop in there and see everyone working on loads of models um, and make me feel like I haven't worked on anything. So it's been, it's been great. But yeah, join the Discord. There's there's loads of conversation always going on. Um, if it's about competitive play, list building, even law, new releases, a lot of focus on like um, painting and modeling and all that sort of thing. So that's sort of a thing for anyone. And I think the Discord's been going for about three years now, and we only had to have the ban one person, and that was just a troll who joined and started posting loads of. I can't even remember what he was posting. You've, you've said it now. Yeah. Right, <laughs> we're we're trolls, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah now we got all the trolls. We're going to be busy for the next week. Um... That'll be fine. Uh, I was just going to quickly say, though, I was getting out of my cabinet. Um, you know, the new contrast paints. Yeah. I went into the store to try them the other day. I was like, oh, yeah, you can try a couple of the new ones you want. So I tried every single one I could find. Uh, I don't know how well you can see this. Beautiful, well beautiful. Camera. But 100% uh, uh, your new paint scheme. Uh, this is, this is the new paint scheme. scheme, yeah. But as as doing like a one off, it was fun because you could paint anything. But if you had to do this for everything, it'd be horrible. But I, tr I tried every single one, and I'll be honest, I don't like. I don't know how well it comes out, but that you can't see it well enough. But the uh, purple on the base is really, really nice, and there's, there's like some really, really nice colours. There's like an Eldari sort of like turquoise one. Um, and the contrasts are, uh, I think, some of them better colors than the original ones. But I've heard the washes, some of them are not so good. The shades, are they? They've changed the yeah. non oil and all that sort of thing um, over. But that is what it is. But anyway, yeah, get your models painted. Um, you got any more questions? Anything you feel like we didn't answer uh, during this video? Because, you know, you could talk about how to get back into a game you haven't played for a while or changes in the new German's handbook. You could talk about that for, for years, but I know that because this German's handbook has been out for publicly like a week now, is it? And then like two weeks, three weeks, two or three, yeah, two or three, um, other YouTubers who get it sent to them probably about five weeks ago. I've realized that there are so many other videos out there. I expect of telling you every single new thing in the new battle, to, uh, in the new German's handbook. So that's not what this video is about. Uh, but I've hoped, if anything, we've managed to make you feel like, well, you're like, oh, there's no point getting back into Age Sigma. Too much has changed. I've completely lost. I hope we've helped you make you think, maybe I'll give it, you know, another go. And then once you, I mean, it's like me, I need to get some more games in, but like anything, get the reps in, get some more games in, make those mistakes. Go, oh, I forgot to do my uh, Monstrous Rampage. Say that a few times, and then you'll remember to not forget. Get AOS reminders. And, um, I think the biggest nice uh, bit of news for anyone who's been out of the game for a while and is going to get back into it, your uh, old um, collection of models where, like, oh, I haven't used these, I don't know, four boys have been sitting on a shelf for, for years. Maybe you'll get some use out of them now. You know, like, 
the world's your oyster a little bit in terms of list building. It's not like there's this one unit in my army and these are the heroes that buff them. That's not like that. And if you really like Warhammer Fantasy, the aesthetic of the table is going to look more like that now. Yep. Um, yeah, cool. So uh, with that, anyone else want to say anything? Or we have to wrap up. Yep. Right, okay. So like the first time I've said it for a while, but thank you very much for watching, everyone. Uh, do appreciate that first video for a long time and everything, like I said. Um, I will try and make, well, I am going to be trying to make more videos. i try like once a week, but it might not happen. might not see a video for like three weeks or something, but just know that when I do make a video, I do want to try and make it good quality rather than just the sake of trying to rush like a five minute video on, on whatever. I mean, like to be completely honest, it'd be very easy for me to uh, talk out my ass and give made up sort of like personal opinions of what I think about all the changes for every army in Age Sigma and make like very easy content that way, but I'm not going to do that because I, I don't know the answer to those questions. Um, so I'm going to be making videos about things that I can do and to try and help people really at the end of the day. Um, I want to say a massive thank you to everyone who's supported me on Patreon and YouTube membership because um, it's been really, really nice to see that where I haven't been able to make videos, I've still seen people support the channel and everything else. It means a lot to me, honestly. And also seeing lots of people write nice messages to me because I hadn't made a video for a while, just checking the bars. Okay, is very, very nice. And thirdly, um, because I support Ukraine, I'm not a Nazi. Uh, but with all of that, uh, I thank you very much for watching this video. I hope I see you again in a future video. We're going to try and, um, well, we are definitely going to do a video about how to play more competitively. So that's like a step two to this video, if you like. Um, and with that, guys, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you very much to my guests as well for joining me and taking time out of their busy, very hot Saturday, which is, at, I mean, I'm sweating um, completely in the t-shirt here. So thank you very much for joining me because I know that none of us can really have the fan on at this point, And this has gone on for a long time. <laughs> but um, any other questions, put them in the comments below. We'll be happy to answer the best we can. Any sort of like more personal questions? Like if, if anybody asks me, uh, I used to play Beast of Chaos, for example, um, but I haven't really for a while because I heard they weren't very good. Left the game, came back. Uh, apparently, you guys said they were good. What do I? How do I build a list? Join the goddamn Discord and ask <laughs> and tag that name, um, yeah, Theo Rag Ben. Ask him. He's a uh, he's a <laughs> moderator now, and he should change his name to Beast Lord or something. And that's then that's very easy. Um, and then that then that's easy. And like to be honest, we're all happy to to answer things. Uh, Matt has played a lot of games. I know in third edition, you were saying like. He's got a lot more experience than I do on those sorts of things. You've got uh, Maxim, who is obviously the king or, or the ever chosen of Zeech, I would say, among other things. <laughs> and then Arkan, who's basically the person who makes sure no one sets fire to the Discord, which is always nice. He's the greeter. <laughs> yeah. I'm the greeter. I am he the, the greeter. greeter of the server, yeah. He's the one, he's the one who pours drink. Welcome to the party. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Exactly. Oh, um, I'm gonna do that next time we do a video. That that will be my uh, <laughs> yeah. intro. We'll have a drink. Well, like wear a tuxedo and have a drink and just like pass drinks around. Uh, <laughs> exactly. And what I would say as well is that um, for content, I might be making some night haunt videos because um, there's some of us from the Discord are going to go to a tournament in Leeds uh, called Trouble at the Mill on the first yep. and second October. First tournament I've been for a long time. Luke, Luke here, so I can, you can see Picard there, um, hasn't actually had a physical game of Warhammer, so... Uh, I'll, be, I'll, be t I'll be popping up, Jerry. It'll be fine. I mean, yeah, 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 I'm I popping up. Be... Ben's not far away. Mac, Mac to Matt Mac. are talking about coming now as well. Yeah, I might have been roped in, so uh, I've now got to get my 2,000-point <laughs> army painted, I guess, for October. Are you coming? Oh, awesome. <laughs> I've just been most of the tournament is going to be us. <laughs> yeah, it's going to become the Asian Nagash tournament. Uh, be, yeah. I'm gonna have to get. Have to see what's the best way to get uh, there. <laughs> yeah, the best way. It's like the. Uh, no. sk uh, Skipple to Leeds is about forty-five minutes. Yeah, I... <sighs> the problem is tickets are eight hundred. <laughs> what? Yeah, eight hundred to get over. Eight hundred right. now. Where must you base? Return. Yep. What? Where must you base? In October. Oh, that's awesome. Max. Hmm? Max, where must you base? Uh, I'm uh, I'm sport, but um, so it's in the middle, uh, but like for some reason, there's only a direct flight with KLM, and KLM is expensive. 
Well, if you start building a raft now, you start walking now, you'll make it by October. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I might get a train to London. That's only 100. Yeah, the Eurostar, I suppose. But Yeah, yeah but look, London to Leeds is not a cheap train. I'm, it's going to be about another 100. I'm yeah. going to yeah. have to be on the train. So yeah. I'm be pretty, pretty, it's pretty quick. It's, it's only 2015, so... Yeah. Well, if there's a tournament in mainland Europe at some point, we'll have to go and it's excuse to have a yeah. holiday, isn't it? Yeah. Ah, you can you can prepare for worlds. That's in the Netherlands. Uh, is it yeah. <laughs> 2023? Isn't, <laughs> isn't, isn't worlds the one where that's a bit you have more to be selected to play? <laughs> I think I'm ready. I have no idea. I promise. <laughs> one of those games where you get to the end of it, you just don't know what's happened, yeah. but you're dead. Yeah, <laughs> there is there is a plan for we just had, we just had in in. Oh, sorry. Wait, sir, yes, Max. Sorry. Uh, there is one. That should be next week, year. That's uh, more international orientated for the grand. It's the Grand Masters, and that's just buy a ticket, go. And last year we had a whole bunch of English players, a uh, Swedish guy, Polish one. So that was good fun. So mm -hmm. I would I recommend that one. I'm I'm planning on trying to go to Sheffield Slaughter in February. I think. Uh, yeah, Sheffield, Sheffield won't be too bad. That'd be good. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just half hour drive from us. So. Yeah. yeah, it's but I almost live in Sheffield, so it's I get free accommodation for that one. So. Oh, yeah. wow. That's banging. I know yeah. um, I went to, again, a while ago, but um used to go to uh, the one in Derby. Uh, hmm. I think it's called Blood something. Uh, oh, I can't remember. Um, well, I ran, it was run by Ben Curry. Anyway, that was a good one. Um, Nagash, when you come up for the tournament, we may all have to do a live stream. We'll do an evening live stream chat where we're all in one room. We may, I'll bring my laptop, shall I? And we'll do that. Um, we can, all, we can all hug after around a few drinks. drinks. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that, <laughs> yeah. Nagash after dark. Yeah, Nagash after dark. Basically, <laughs> if anyone's joined me for a video before we go live, um, on the Discord, there's usually I'll do I'll do a video with someone on the Discord. And the video will they say the video goes in for a solid two hours. There's a solid three hours before that of um uh stuff that's not allowed on YouTube. Um, yeah. but it's it's always good fun. One of them was researching how much it would cost to have Delphine on this video, but um again, that's uh, that's very different. Uh but what I would say as well is I'm probably I might be tempted to go to Warhammer World and stuff over the next uh month or two to try and get some games and stuff would be quite cool. Or I was thinking maybe on the Discord before October, we could have like a little mini tournament or something um, and just like smash a bunch of games on a Saturday or something like that or a Sunday uh, just mm -hmm. to get like the reps in and stuff, just like free games in a day or something. It could be fun. Um, but yes, yeah, so with that, I'm just going to see that Rock has obviously put a message in what Luke was saying. So so morning from Nashville. Um, so morning very much to yourself, Rock. Hope you're doing well. Uh, hope it's sunny there, but not too sunny, obviously. Um, Wonder what time it is. How many hours are they behind? Nashville. Uh, I don't know about like six. Six is six central eight. time. Yeah. Yeah, it should be about six hours back. Well, very good morning to yourself. Um, what I would say is that because we're coming to the end of the video, feel free to watch it back. Basically, just a, a general talk about our experience, our experiences, what we think is a good way to get back into the game, and what we think is a good few uh, notes to remember on what have changed. Uh, I just joined, so would love to hear your thoughts on Soul Black Grave Lords. Um, if what I'd say my best thoughts of Solver Grave was bear in mind this was before the new Gemma's Handbook because I have actually done like a really long video series on that. Like, if you want to hear me on my thoughts and what I think about, I don't know, Dead Walker Zombies, I've, I've done about a video that's it's about an hour long on that. If you want in depth uh, advice and stuff, uh, if you've got any specific questions and stuff, feel free to put it in the Discord and I'll try and help you and anyone else who plays Soul Knight as um, best I can, mate. But uh, nice to that you play what? Uh, three units of 20 Graveguard in a Bounty Hunter Britannia. That, that's your answer. Absolutely yeah. brutal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anything after that, have fun. Run those three units of 20 yeah. Graveguard in a Bounty Hunted Battalion. You're having great fun. Yeah, yeah you have a great time. <laughs> also, like what I'd suggest as well, so I don't know how well it is, but like, I think Vargice and a Bounty Hunter could be quite good because they're quite fast and nimble. Um, mm. If you want to have... So, Blood Knights. Blood Knights. Blood, Blood Knights. Yeah. If to I had Blood honest, Knights, that'd be great. Yeah. Whatever you played like, before the gen this General's Handbook, you can still fucking play it. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
yeah. it might be better in some ways, might be worse in some ways, but they counter each other. Like, yeah, if you, you can... want to go to lots of zombies with the uh, with the horses route, it's still the same. It's still good. Yeah, you can still remember like Games Workshop is always going to make it sound like you need to make big changes in what you take because you need to invest and buy more stuff because they're a, they're a company and they're going to do that. Um, so don't don't feel like there's always basically. We've seen it before when a new general's handbook comes out and not much change is in it, but they always pick up to make it sound like there's always changes that you have to shake up what you're taking. Yeah. But um, but yes, yeah, so that's that's pretty much it. Um, and then any more questions on that? Feel free to send this one and try to help the best you can. Um, right, okay. So again, I'm going to thank you to my guests very much for joining me. Uh, it's been very nice. Uh, Matt's first video as well uh, on a YouTube. Yeah. So thank you very much for joining Matt. Uh, very good for sharing me. your advice. You're very welcome. And uh, just so people know, that's, that's generally how we do things. Like when we do these sort of like live um, videos, for quite a few of us. Um, if you're if you're in the Discord and you're I don't know, you've got loads of experience on Silver and F, and uh, you're loving the new book, and you you love to hear my thoughts on it. I'll tell you, I don't really have many thoughts. But if you want to do a video of me and you want to talk about it and tell me your experiences and how to play it and stuff, you know that, that that's very much how we do things here. Um, like we need to get a beast video out then at some point because we were going to do one, weren't we? And obviously things and have changed. Have changed. Yeah. yeah. So well, instead, that, instead of saying how can we make them okay, it would be like how do you win your games? Like how do you not yeah. win? <laughs> be the question. But um, yes. So with that, guys, thank you very much for joining me. Um, thank you everyone who's watching this. Thank you everyone who supported the channel. Again, obviously, if you can like this video, subscribe to the channel. Uh, massively helps. It's absolutely free. I don't know why you wouldn't. Um, and that is pretty much that. Tick the bell button if you'd like to. And um, yeah, so until next time, guys, thank you very much for watching this. Stay safe, and I look forward to seeing you much sooner than it has been in the past. I'll catch you later.